What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest in the building. Listen, this man has been to almost every corner of the earth to play music. He's from the Grammy Award winning song. You know we have in the building today? We have Bobby Chin from Black Chinese in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? Um, Big up, Muscle. Where oh, yes, says Bobby Chin. Yeah, Thank I you the, so much. For work, I, I, I'm in the building, but we're in different countries. But you're in the building. Yes, I'm in the building. You I just came, that. just came up the elevators. Again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast, where we're going to go right from the beginning of your career, right yeah. up until 2022. So my first question for you is this: Yeah, where did you grow up, and what type of child were you? Um. I grew up in a place called Mona Heights in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, I spent most of my life there. That's where I started DJing and stuff. What kind of child I was? I was a very mischievous child. What kind um, of stuff did you get into as a child when you say you're mischievous? What kind of sleep with every girl in my neighborhood? You're a child, Bobby. A child. I didn't say as a teenager. A child. Oh. Oh, as a child, I did that too. <laughs> uh, when I was 12, mm-hmm. when I was 12, I can never forget this. My next door neighbor, the little girl next door told me she was pregnant for me. I don't know what she was talking about because it never even go in. Mm-hmm. But me as a 12-year-old, I never know what pregnancy was. I'm going to start crying. My ball. I'm gonna say, oh. But yeah, I mean, I grew up in a but I say uh, upper class or middle class back in those days. You know, middle class don't exist right now. But, <laughs> you know, my parents used to run a Chinese restaurant in Jamaica called Mimi Restaurant. Okay. And, yeah, I, I grew up pretty, you know, pretty much sheltered, loving parents. Never want to go dance or go anywhere, not even play football, you know? So, yeah. But... That's that is about it for that growing up part. Uh, and what did you think you were gonna grow up to be? Do you want to become a doctor, lawyer? What did you think at that point? You're growing up. You were gonna become. It's funny that you said that because, for my grandmother who is Canadian, mm-hmm. she wanted to took me to become a doctor so bad. So that was my first option. Mm-hmm. Then when I realized you had to study for 10 years, I was like, no. Nah. And then I couldn't stand the sight of blood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I know the doctor thing wouldn't really work out. But I lost all fear for that when I had my first child. Because I, I was terrified of going into the, 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 the room when my daughter's mother was having her. And... You know, when, when, when it's something like that, I, you don't even see the blood. You're just thinking of the beauty of a child being born. And I guess it's the same way a doctor feel, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if they must save a life, it's the beauty of a life, saving life. You don't really see the blood or anything. You just say, you are nasty, you know what I mean? Yeah, you'd, have but, passed, you'd have passed all of that. Right. So uh, then I realized I, I could actually be a doctor. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was thinking about it for a while. I was thinking about, yeah, but no, so much woman, but I want to be a gynecologist for real. <laughs> but <laughs> but I never want to get into no trouble with that. Too, so. sure. Then, no, I thought about being a lawyer too. And I was like, you know what? Most of these lawyers are crooks. Mm-hmm. And I can't deceive people in that way, you know? So, I mean, every profession have them good and bad. So, yes, I really wanted to be a doctor, and the lawyer was the second option, and I'm also a graphic artist. Okay. Yeah. And I studied mass communications, so. Okay, so then growing up, you were in between doctor, you were thinking lawyer, and those type of stuff. So it was more academic is what you were looking at at that time there. Right. But then, you know, a lot of... When you take CXC, if you get uh, my CXC was like a forest. 
Mm. A, lot, a lot of trees. <laughs> and they need ones and twos to move on. Yeah. Well, you can actually say I study medicine, you know, because I was in high school for 20 years. Yeah. We repeat evergreen. Yeah. Bobby. My last. The good old Bobby. Yeah. My last longer than some of the principal them, because them get fired at me still there at school. <laughs> Yeah. Well, even going into school now, when did, even before that, when did you start to actually even notice music? Because you said you were sheltered, your parents didn't really let you go out and do too many things. When did you start to notice music? Um, I, I came from a neighborhood where music had a big influence, like art. I live on a place called Lillyway, big up Lillyway. Mm -hmm. Um. Master Lee, who started Code Red, live on the next street. Dr. J from Renaissance live on the next street. Jazzy T live down the road. My Jazzy T mother actually beat my brother wedding cake. So always one close knit. Delano, Jazzy T, the Obsession, the Copper Shot, Big Up Matthew, Big Up. You understand? All of we grew up together and actually. <clears throat> my house had the only turntable. So everybody used to come around there. I tell you, said Jazzy D couldn't mix for, for save himself back in them days. I look at him now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One of the greatest ever. And I don't think Jazzy D get enough credit. But him, you know, Master Lee, same thing. Master Lee used to play Renaissance. You know that, right? Yeah, man. Okay. And then you have Dr. J. And then you have, um, there was a song called Ambassadors. I don't know if you heard of that song. Yep. Yeah. And um, Legacy, Leju. Those are mostly uptown songs. Those were all the uptown songs. So then there was music in your ear, even though you weren't going out, you would hear sounds playing. Or how would you really get attached to the music this time here? All right. So we'll find my little song on him, Studio B. Mm-hmm. And look up uptown sound. We used to go to people party and play and then thief them plate and knife and them thing. There. Mostly house party. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, I remember cutting my first dub plate. Mm -hmm. This is the thing, you know. I was the younger one. So I never get my chance to shine because my older brother was the one mixing and other. Uh, uh, so I always have a, I always have to fight. Forget playing time. And my playing time is when everybody I walk out. Mm. And I remember go, bringing that little, I went to Canada and I came back with a little record. A little, like, you know, you get a kid's meal. It was a little plastic record, you know. Mm -hmm. I carry it back from Canada. I'm going to, go to, this is when now, all right. We'll go to the University of the West Indies. Them have, it, them have campus fit back in them days. Eh? Hold on, though. Before we even get there, because I think you jump forward too fast. Come trying to get through your school yeah. time, and then yeah. we're going to get to those there. Ah, uh, yeah. In school now, were you actually doing anything in music? Were you ever, do you ever want to sing, DJ, do anything else besides actually play music at one time? Uh, no, just play music. Mm -hmm. And I went to, I went to George's, St. George's College. Mm. which uh, had a big music influence in there too you know so you have soul syndicate um all of them port more sound back in the days um this guy what name goldfinger you used to go judge to chris chris goldfinger yeah man yeah it's um, a new game super twitch mm -hmm. you used to go judge to and it, like a lot of selectors used to go there so you know the school fed them who always want to play, but <clears throat> the sound that I used to play mm -hmm. actually used to have everything muscle, like all of the the, the new twelve inch them and everything. Mm -hmm. So feet you know, student be create them used to be loaded, 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 loaded. You understand? Mm -hmm. So in school now is when you actually join your first sound. Yes. How do you guys even come up with that first sound? Say, okay, let's put together a song now. Um, well, the sound was owned by a guy called Emilio Demessa. 
Mm-hmm. We used to live right beside Dr. Dre. But them time, the Dr. Dre really young, because I was older than him. Mm-hmm. And um, him have him turntable them set up around the back. And we used to just go there and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Believe it or not, you know, muscle. Willie can tell you this, my mix better than Willie. Hmm? Cause before I was an MC, I used to mix. Got you. That is my talent. And back in them days, I used to play disco. So, yeah, I wasn't an MC. <clears throat> but just I became an MC. <clears throat> when when well, when I reach I say it, but yeah. So even as a DJ now looking at somebody, who are you looking at? Was there anybody in the area that you see in playing a song or as a DJ or mixing? You say, you know what? This is what I like. This is what I want to try and do also. Most definitely. Rory. Uh, I look at Rory as When, you know what his nickname is, right? The genius. He was a genius. Mm-hmm. Um, Rory was like here, and everybody else was here. And I said, I want to be this man, because when he walk in a dance, people just like go crazy, like, oh, Rory Reach, Rory Reach. Mm-hmm. Then you have a next you know where, where. To me, better than Rory, but him never did as big as Rory at the time. Ian, Roadstar. I knew, listen to me. When you said that, as soon as you set that up, I knew yeah. without a doubt you were going to yeah. say Ian, without a doubt. Yo, Ian did bad, because every minibus from town to Havendale play mm. Roadstar mix. So I, I put the two of them together and I ad- adapt. And then you have a next little song named Inner City, what we used to love. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? In a city, Mark Jagan, um, Danny, them time the Mataran was a box boy on that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I get a big influence from them, man. You know what I mean? And then you said, okay, this is, you want to start mixing and playing like how these guys are playing right here. And what was oh. the name of the song? Studio B. Studio B. And who else was on the sound at this time here? It was me, my brother, a guy named Richard De Mesa, Emilio De Mesa, and Lorenzo De Mesa. Mm-hmm. All so five of you guys on the song. Yes. Where were you guys playing at this time here now? Every uptown party you can think of. Orange Grove Carnival, um, Hope Pastures Carnival, um, University of the West Indies, every dorm, Mary Seacole, Chancellor Hall, Taylor Hall. Um, well, actually, I had our own equipment too. Okay. Yeah, so we get the full learning of everything because we have to string up the sound we have to pull it down we have to ride you know the chalk back everything <laughs> those times there. when do you guys actually get to play with another big song with you guys there's a little song and you guys now get to play alongside a big song we're, we're just a little uptown song rich people thing and and then we start get interested in the ghetto thing and i remember one day uh, i went to play at a dance come in it was like a wicked juggler, and I'm a player at a dance at a place called Chelsea Avenue. That I had a ghetto. And but just know, me just a juggle around this man. Mm. And he's from the ghetto. I'm not. So I'm kind of start feel intimidated now. One big fight, run out of the place. Mm-hmm. So then we realize the thing, like if, if me that powerful, then you know, me can do damage. And then, you know, yeah, me just start. Getting at the whole real dub plate thing and you know, start cut some dub for Studio B. And what was your name when you were on Studio B? Um, Super Bobby. Super Bobby. How did you get your name? Everybody was super back in the days. Super Bobby, Super Muscle, Super Twitch, Super Matter, and Super Dub, Super Everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody was drinking soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bobby, those times. So you go on and go. So then, when was the first time you guys really got a, either booked up a song, a big song, another song, or where was a real pivotal moment for the song at that time there? Oh, uh, I think uh, that's a, the big the big song that we really played against was at our University of the West Indies um, fit, and it was Travelers. Okay. 
Yeah. What like, was that like now playing with uh, travelers at that time there? We never have no song for match them, but we would juggle them out. We would juggle them out. Cause them tell me it was Marvin Chin. Mm -hmm. I played a song. And he was like the king of that little era of Tavern and Papine and Kentire and Argostown, you know? Mm -hmm. It was Travelers and Silverhawk back in those days. So you got to play with Travelers, you out juggle them stuff is going and good. So then, yeah. what's the sound now? Studio B. How long were you on the song for? Um, Years. Years. Mm -hmm. What were some other pivotal moments on the song? Um... We used to be really bad. We have a crew, cause we have a football team named Spurs. Mm -hmm. So everybody on Spurs would follow the sound. And I remember a pivotal moment with this lady. You know what Orange Grove is? It's a rich neighborhood, Cherry Gardens, mm -hmm. in um, Jamaica. And she, she kept a New Year's Eve party and she gave us a bunch of fireworks. I just said, Bin Night, I want you guys to let it off. Mm -hmm. You know, stop the sound and let it off. I would teeth every single one of them. <laughs> 12 o'clock come, one firework. <laughs> the lady was like, where's the rest? Yeah. We take home all of them. And then now they're so rich. Them, the, the catering was real plates and knife and fork, metal. <laughs> In the record box, we put the whole and plate them. I would all, yeah, that's not we carry home the plate them and them thing there. Well, that was, that was a pivotal moment. Yeah. <laughs> Um, our next moment is Ninja Man. The first time I said, you know, we had something to reach you. We don't know what we're gonna take bus go jammies for. Mm. I will buck up on Ninja Man. I will say, Ninja Man, what a dub plate. Him giving me the first dub. Ninja Man. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the man him never want to give it to us in a book persistent and some look rich you. It was like, yo. Ray, 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 and him just give it a dub and the duck read him. And my god, the first dub. I'll 10 times and I dance where I play it every round. Because <laughs> now you're getting dubs. Dubs is a big thing at that time. Right? Big, big, big. You have a dub play it with Ninja Man and, and I'm saying, <laughs> dub big. Who else did you guys end up cutting that day down at Jammies? Um, um, this artist named um, Pompidou. Remember him? Mm. Of course. Tolo T. Mm -hmm. Once them said Ninja Man give us a dub, them start, you know? Everybody will say, yo, I'm gonna give you a song, I'm gonna give you a song. Not knowing that the more ask for for money after. <laughs> so I actually never see Tola T after that. Come and tell them so come here, go to the shop, go change out some money. I'm never return to Jamies. <laughs> like that. What year was this song? Was this song around? Um 80s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. Them time they were young, 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 late 80s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Studio B. So you're yeah. doing your stuff. So what was the next move after Studio B here now? Um, This is where my life get interesting now. Mm -hmm. I have a cousin. She was like a sell diet coke in a DC. Mm -hmm. she big. She was huge. She got deported. So she came to our house to stay. And then she noticed that I'm very much interested in music and I was a DJ. And she was like, she named Janet. She has gang on you so far. She was like, um, my baby father was son in DC. Why you don't go play it? And she met the link and him just fly me up to DC. Mm -hmm. And that is where it started. I saw him earthquake. Yes. Yeah, so was this your first time actually in the States at this time here now? Um, a second time. Mm -hmm. My first, so you... first time was in Tulsa, Oklahoma to get my green card mm -hmm. with my parents. But, you know, I went through a bad experience where what, uh, the six people just kick off my door and rob me. In ski masks, put pillow over my head, guns, everything, and, you know, ramsack the place. And I told my mother I would never go back to Tulsa. And mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up in Washington to go play the song the second time you came back. Not knowing that Washington would have been the murder capital of the world. <laughs> At that time. And what, what year did you end up getting to Earthquake now? 
it's the end of the 90s now. Now, the first night my land in a DC, them picked me up, right? Mm-hmm. And then carry me to a, a apartment and then put me in a room. I said, Bobby, this is your room. It's just a mattress. You know? hmm. I'm gonna lie down. Five o'clock, I wake up, I say, Police have shine light in my face. And I say, Yo, this is not him. So I said, Shit, what is hmm. so you know, I'm gonna just put two and two together. The man I'm gonna play the sound, you know, them are some big. Big timer. Mm-hmm. And the police walk past the man on the couch and come in at the bedroom because apparently they know in bedroom. You see me? So I'm right there. They realize it wasn't me, so they must leave me alone. And this is your first night actually being in the place at this time here now. Yeah, that was the first night. The second night was a high speed chase. <laughs> <clears throat> apparently, me I drive with the boss for the sound. Mm-hmm. Him see somebody what owe him money, him tell the man pull over and the man just pew. And me and this man I chased the man all over Washington, DC. Remember, I'm not used to them thing. I'm come from uptown. Mm-hmm. And we did a high speed chase. The man come out of MTR, run left it, run to a restaurant, left him passport, everything in the car. And I, I don't know. Well, we don't say you know what that are for them life, but they have to play music. And they get, but, they get, then they get worse. But that's what I was gonna say. Didn't that make you feel strange? Like, listen, I'm not used to this. I'm from a different place where this doesn't happen. Weren't you thinking that at this time you might want to probably, even though it's a couple of days, you might want to go back home or something? Uh, I thought of it, but guess what? As a young youth, I grew up. Mm-hmm. Don't play it. Make you happy. Mm. And them have all that Dublin. So I said, even if six men are dead in front of me, more play the song. When you got there, who else was playing the song at that time? There, a guy named Burby G, and I used him Carpal C, and I used him Keith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at this time, when you came on, you came on as a selector because you still weren't talking at this time here yet. Absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Say, Bobby, your first dance on this Saturday. I said, all right, we're ready. Ready. Yes, who? Who that? A freak. Mm-hmm. Bodyguard. Okay. A freak on the right. And at that time, a freak was the stone love of mm-hmm. America. Yes, boss. Biggest sound. Then you have Johnny from the left. Actually. Just Gemini, Glamour Wind, mm-hmm. Bodyguard, and Africa, big dance, ram, ram, ram. I mean, you remember up to come from me? I'm dropping the one thing nowhere. I see people are buying champagne. I used to people are buying friggin' Pepsi and them thing that up to party. Mm-hmm. And rum and coke, you know. Uh, hey, Bobby, just rum and coke. No, I'm not used to man I buy 60 bucks of champagne and one bag of bashment. Mm-hmm. But anyway, them um, I met the other man. Them really play and us observe, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I see them play good and thing. And I say, yeah. then it get more interesting. So that was a juggling, or that was a clash, or that was a hardcore juggling. What was that night like? Them body get that choice word. Where my mama knew upon the sound, some of us. But just Bill and make the other man them do them thing, you understand? <clears throat> but they got a true word. Africa was not a clash zone, really. Mm-mm. And then Glamour Win, a true back word from Janet. And the dance was just good. Back in those days, clash was a more friendly environment. It's who play better. Mm-hmm. That's why I say tough juggling. Because it's always, even in juggling, it's always a competition, but it's not always so upfront. But it's always a competition when it comes to music. True that. You know what I mean? You said it got more interesting now. What happened here now? Now, me in the basement every day with them dub plate, and this I mean every day. But just I study, 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 study. Every day, study, study, play, me I mix. Then I start mix some tape. Because mm-hmm. that was my thing, I can mix. You know? Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Then I practice my mic. 
and them things, then the sound become bigger and bigger and bigger because of those tapes. Because of the tapes? Yeah. Then now, the other man them on the sound now, one of them, which is my brethren, Keith, up to this day, he had a mastermind behind selecting the dub them. And him teach me them. You understand? If me a play, me not have to turn around. Him just put on the dub plate, wipe it off, legal, ready for go. And the other man, them kind of start get jealous. But the boss, I look on it now like, no, that nigga, you bad. Mm -hmm. So if them want to get jealous, them, them can go about their business. And that's what happened. So when they are leaving you and Keith on the song alone? Me and Keith alone. Me and Mix and Talk. Me. So how did you actually get into talking and who did you look up to as a MC and say, okay, this is who I'm trying to talk like at this time here now? The same people I'm going to tell you about. Mm -hmm. Rory. Um, just everybody back in those days. Mark Jagan. Ian. Mm -hmm. The mama brother named Captain Midnight. Well, Super Saint, boss. Yes. Captain Midnight in Wicked. Mm -hmm. Um. Where's? You have a son named Squad 51. You remember what them? Wani. Wani. I play against him too. Okay. In Jamaica. In Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's just a coalition of everybody. Silver Heart, them, you, you get the look of Bad Man style and Jaro. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ricky Chupa. You see me? Um, that type of match around is just like me, you know, the growing stages. Mm -hmm. Um, you used to have a son named Earth, uh, Earth Ruler, Sprocket yeah. them. Yes, yeah. Bertie Kill Quick and them on there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna start adopt all of them because style. You know, the thing about it you now, if you give a good DJ, a good selector, ammunition, mm -hmm. and you will get to that later on. If you give them ammunition and bad man around them, what gone? Nothing but up. Okay. Come, mm -hmm. I can stand up wrong a song and tell a boy, suck your mother. And you just have to go suck your mother. Because if you try anything, his guns have never run. So what made you actually decide to pick up a mic this time when you're on Earthquake? Because the man them cut left the sound and I may have to do it. Mm -hmm. Keith, Keith couldn't talk for the mic. Him, him, him's like, a, you know, more reserved. Him, him not have the, the mic thing. But, but don't did I practice the mic thing from Jamaica. Okay. You see me? So, yeah, I just, I wasn't the best mic person, but I could have helped myself. You knew what you wanted to do. So, okay, bam. Yeah, Man, them left. It's you and Keith. You guys are on the song now. So then yeah. what was next for Earthquake at this time here now when it's you as the MC and Keith is the man selecting the song, building the song? What was the next move for you guys now? Then now, because of my history in Jamaica with artists, let's start getting what if I dub for the song. Mm -hmm. Like the Buja, you know, me and Buja are friends from day one. Okay. Um, bound to them. Remember the Ninja Man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Ninja Man said, Oh, you're going to far now. Go and play a big sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I got arrows, go cut dub, a police got me. The way so much money I spend. Mm -hmm. So, I'd say, the, big, the first big dance I get was against Black Cat. Do you remember the year? I don't remember the year, but I remember what happened. Talk to me. All right. You might remember this year. The first time Black Cat ever came to America, them killed Addis. You remember? This was about a 93. Right. Mm -hmm. So them killed Addis, and the next date was in D.C. with Earthquake. Got you. Okay, so then now this is Cat, they did what they did in New York. Now they came over to DC. So this is almost like the story that nobody ever hears. Now we're gonna get to hear it now. Exactly. And what happened to Black Cat was that's <laughs> you know, I was driving 
all day. And I said, what are we going to do for kill black cats? Mm-hmm. And I drive past a karate store and I saw a ninja suit. So I just get a ninja suit. The only thing you could have seen was my eyes. Mm. I'm have a big sword. I'm walking at the dance and just the entrance alone make the dance turn over. Mm. Then I go stand up on the table beside the turntable. I'm going to play, Uno better, show me Uno. And I just realized that the whole entire crowd come down for me, turn over the sound, start wetting up with champagne, and that was it for Black Cat. Just like it. that. Just like that. But Panther never know our region. Mm-hmm. But you know, him, him, him is a genius, so he just take it and lose. But that's so, the honest to God truth. So, how many rounds did you guys end up end up playing that night there? After that, the dance done. So basically, what you said is you came in, you played the one song, and that was it, boss. We played the one song, and the people have never wired here no more. Yeah, I can't remember. But I think the dance went on. Mm-hmm. We we'll start playing about music, but remember the whole sound turn over and everything, dog. Mm-hmm. So it, it was it was like one of the most amazing nights of my life, and I saw yeah. me orchestrate because the whole ninja suit and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that caught Panther off guard. Cause remember, Panther was hot like fire at oh, this God. time, you know. Panther killed everything what come out Manchester, everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then him come kill Adi's car. Yo, the man never need no dub for kill you. It was he knew how to work a crowd. You know what I mean? Panta, one of the greatest ever. Ever. Hands down. Mm-hmm. If you look at his ratio, mm-hmm. this, is, this is how I judge a sound. No sound can win every clash. No. But their, their ratio of winning to losing, mm-hmm. they have more wins. Just like Bass Alice. I don't, I don't, you know, Bass Alice is one of the greatest sound ever in a dog. Ever, brass. I mean, I don't think people give them enough credit. Forget about Dillinger mm-hmm. and the new one, them. What Mark and Squingy did, them mm-hmm. paved the way for them, you there. So you don't think they really get the Mark and Squingy, especially, really gets that credit that they deserve to say? This don't. was that team there? Don't. What? Yo, dog. Sometimes it's a base and you win a dance where them shouldn't win. Tell the truth, muscle. And 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 Dillinger has that capability too mm-hmm. of winning a dance without playing good. <laughs> Look at the dance the other day with, against Mattia. The, 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 the some first dance, you saw that? Sumpest. Yeah, man, I seen the some first dance. To me, to me, the engine never play good. Mm-hmm. But if you make them man, they go tune for tune, it's going to be a problem. They know how to command a crowd. That is based on the boy. I have to give them that credit. I, for, I, have to them. I mean, I'm a, I'm a really and truly great based on the I always tell people that if it's clash, would I want the pandemic on the team? Mm-hmm. You see me? No, they definitely know how to play the song and make everything work there. Bob. Well, All right. You guys very, first. Very, very few selectors know how to change a dance. That is, you know what? That's true. Because a lot of times you'd see a dance going downhill. And a lot of people they, they don't know how to get out of that hole that exactly. they're going down. Yeah. Firing saw one of them. Mm-hmm. Matarana one of them. Chupa is one of them. Mr. Chupa lose a dance. I came in and start crying and him win. <laughs> you understand? They have this thing about them, which is just uh, yo crazy. The same Panta. I seen Panta do it a million times, but one million or more. That youth is great, mm-hmm. great. If need for the power of Jamaica, dollar build them or something. Yeah, no Panta. Yeah. Panta's wild, bro. And it's my virgin for life. That isn't mm-hmm. it. So then he gave you your first hype now in DC, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So what was your next moves around the sound now? Because now you guys have this hype going on. Were you guys juggling some more, getting into more clash? Because at that time there, it was kind of a lot of dancers juggled and turned into a clash. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, no. Remember the first dance I'm telling you about it, Afrique? Mm-hmm. 
But look on it, you know, I'm going to say, Africa, every dance Africa come to DC, have people from the roof to the ground. So me, I know my mind, I say, if me demolish them youth here, then I'm going to get some recognition. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, it was um, Crazy Richie. That the, the, the venue was called Reggae Hut. Mm -hmm. And I just turned on a heat on him and bust him up, kill him dead. So the promoter come to me now and say, Yo, you can't kill Afrique unless Claude, Jagger B, and Richie did it. Mm -hmm. You can't just kill one man. So then book back the dance and we kill all three of them the next time. Okay, because remember, as you said, Afrique wasn't really a Killing song, they weren't really a class song, but they had no. enough dubs at that time there, too. You know, they had, a, dubs. they had a lot of dubs and they had the crowd. Mm -hmm. So, what did you have to do to actually deal with a freak this time here? Just like how you deal with a real freak, we just kill them. Mm -hmm. You see me? Because you remember now, me tell them I have the bucket behind me and the guns and the dubs. So I'm never afraid for do nothing. You understand? Mm -hmm. We just we just start a clash with them. You want to hear the honest to God truth? One hundred percent. I never have nowhere to change my clothes, and I change my clothes in a in an African room. <laughs> what do you mean? Hotel room. Mm -hmm. They make me change my clothes, and I'm still end up killing them on them dog. Yeah, but then you're become. You know what it sounds like. This earthquake was becoming. Then the Africa, bad area, so yes, and then Africa just start go down, go down, go down. Mm -hmm. You see me? I still give them them respect because Jagabi, I'm a friend. Crazy Richie is my daughter's godfather. Okay. You see me? Yeah. And Claude, I don't mean, you know. All of we become good friends. And all right, you see when it's a funny thing, you know. Muscle, you see respect. Mm -hmm. Met man, met man, friend you more. When a man don't respect you, them not friend you. Mm -hmm. You see me? But respect carry a far away. Mm -hmm. So after my done demolish Africa now. The next dance was Metro Media. Who was, was Sky Juice on Metro Media this time here? Yeah, and then we can call a meeting. Mm -hmm. Because Sky Juice is not a clash, man. Mm -mm. And he might hear about me now, so he might want to talk to me. So in the room, Sky Juice said, Yo, Bobby, you are going now. I'm not, not in the clash thing. I'm going to say, Sky Juice, I don't want to hear that thing. If you're for dead, if you're dead. Mm -hmm. But I never kill him still, because I beg it out. Mm hmm. Then it moved from there to David Radigan. All right, we'll go to Jamaica. We'll cut two million and one bounty on Buju. Because mm -hmm. we know what play against Radigan. And I wouldn't did say. I wouldn't did say I kill him, kill him. Mm -hmm. Because I reached to the dance late. No, I was there before Radigan. And um I juggle and I play tune and the dance and mash up. <laughs> and when Radigan walk in, <clears throat> he take out a piece of paper. And he said, Bobby Chin, I heard you play this song, this song, this song, this song. So somebody tell him what I play. <laughs> and he get a big forward for that and he start playing. But the problem with Radigan, him, right, you know this, he's not a juggler. And you know, back in those days, as you say, it's more of a juggling clash type vibe. Mm. So what I do, I use my brain for them and just start juggle for, you know, for the girl, them mixing two little clash song and it do not make it seem like my girl on him. Mm -hmm. But it end up fall and Radigan start playing the rest of the dance with him head down and not even attack. So I get the next stripe, that's again. And this was Earthquake and David Radigan one on one. One on one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about this? You guys are going in bad 
in D.C.? Cool. Yeah. When was the first time you actually left D.C. now to go play with a song somewhere? I think we'll go to New York. Mm-hmm. Go play with some of them sound up there. Remember, you know, you might bad in a DC, but you're not bad in a New York. But then that's what I'm asking you, because you said you had the man them wrong, you had everything around you in DC. So I want to know what was your experience now, like when you left DC to go play a song somewhere? What was that experience like? Hey, black black cat did actually kill me back in you know? When did this happen? Like after the Radigan thing. Mm-hmm. And next does I just said them kill earthquake. But we got the trophy because I tell you, it's a bad man sound. So, <laughs> what happens is that when Panther start win, I mm-hmm. mean, all the light just cut off. Them trip the breaker, and the next morning, I go to the bar so I see the trophy on the TV. Yeah. So, you know, them used to do them kind of thing, the dog, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but yeah, <clears throat> Baltimore, we used to go to Baltimore a lot, go play against Raw Deal, would have come Miami. Come play with Genesis. Um, back in those days, believe it or not, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're big in you know, California, you don't really get forgotten anywhere else. Or think about this. How many big sounds you have in New York? Enough of them. How much time you ever see them play in Florida? They'd go down there and go play. Not that much. Mm-hmm. You understand? I, I, I live in Florida. I've never seen Earth Ruler play in Florida. Okay. I've never seen LP play in Florida that much back in them days. You understand? It but, had to be like an Addis. You know, that song is traveling right across the US. Yeah, I kill Addis too. Hold on. We're going to... I'm going to mm-hmm. leave this at ease in my mind. But first, again, I want to know about your experience on the road because, again, you don't have the man them beside you like that. So I want to know what it was like on the road. I just behave myself. Mm-hmm. I can't go, you know, come go to Canada. I can't go to go say me a bad man and I have this and that room me. No, I just behave myself. So did you clash outside of, did you clash on the road or it was more clashes were in D.C.? To be honest with you, no. I didn't really clash out of D.C. back in them days. Mm-hmm. And, and I was a juggler, you see me? So if, if earthquake go up on the road, it's usually a juggling party. Is that a clash? Okay. So you guys knew where your strength was. You knew your strength was in DC. That's where the manum is. That's where everything is. So on the road, we're just going to juggle on the road. But when you come to our house, anything or anything. That is right. That is Talk right. to me about Addis now. Well, I look at clash with Addis and them, them bring them own sound. We had our own sound too. Mm-hmm. Them, them bring Jigsy King live. Foot clash against me. And it was Mataran and Babyface. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I just remember somebody throwing a buckle at them and we just kind of ease off the tension. But they were, at that time, was the tension with Mataran and Babyface. Mm. So the chemistry wasn't that good with them. Mm-hmm. Because them, them, them is the next door to that. <laughs> them did bad. When they come into town, boy, yes. you got you to gotta be good to stand up to face a Maturana one time. A lot of people don't give Babyface the credit to them. Give Maturana the credit. Mm-hmm. But his Babyface build it up them. Face was the genius behind that, boss. Yes. I'm going to forgive, forgive him credit because never, they, they never disrespect me yet. Mm-hmm. Up to up to the other day, I see me that the airport would be anyone that a good, good youth. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> the thing with baby faces, is we all get old and generation change. I forget to look at them a chance mm-hmm. for, for boss. I mean, I'm saying I think the other day where as a film dub play them a kill sound. That might be true, but they look at them a play a dub. You see me? I'm actually like them little youth up on Addis right now, Kingpin. Kingpin. Yeah, man. Kingpin is one and good. Because it's not every... You know how much selector them got you? hmm Them little youth have build them own style around Addis. Give them on them credit. hmm No, for I, sure. And, it, and the, the selector them before Kingpin was big selectors. hmm 
Them just couldn't hang the Addies artillery. Kingpin really definitely got into it. Yeah, but I wouldn't say I kill Addies like that. It was just home court advantage. That but that seems that seems what a, a lot of it is. You guys knew on the road, the, uh, you weren't sure what's going to happen, but you know at home, yeah. you know you could defend it. So then that's what you guys were dealing with. Who would you say? You said Black Hat got you one night. Who would? Who else would you say really got you guys good and really put earthquake in their place in their yard? Black Hat. Mm -hmm. That's about it. You can't be no local sound because I won. Mm -hmm. The three biggest sounds in, in DC was Safari, Emperor, mm -hmm. and Earthquake. We all played for a trophy, King of DC, and I won that. Okay. What was that night like there? How crazy. did you guys even come up with a King of DC? Why these three sounds had to clash? What was going on in DC at that time there? Everybody just did ban. Emperor, <coughs> big up Freddie Jen, have him mm -hmm. dub them. He, 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 more foundation sound than Earthquake. Dead a long time. Safari and Wooly for money. Mm -hmm. But Earthquake was the least amount of tune, as I tell you. Back in them days, they would just use a little strategy. They would juggle. And at the time, people were here a little bit of juggling, not just boring, play a song, talk play a song talk you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah and your name was still super bobby when you were on earthquake yeah and um um that was for a trophy to you know mm -hmm. it's a king of dc yeah so nobody can say me never win that mm -hmm. like interview any one of them ask them interview freddie jet they'll tell you and how long were you on um earthquake for <sighs> until Polly showed up in the house what happened there now, Bobby? The one named Sluggy Rankin, man. Mm -hmm. Come back in them days, every artist come out of our house, come chilling. Trevor Sparks, Sluggy, Louis Rankin, everybody. Mm -hmm. And I used to live in the, the hood in DC, Kennedy Street and Georgia Avenue. You can ask anybody about that. Mm -hmm. And a dance was like at the corner of Kennedy Street. Sluggy shoot up the dance and run into the house. Now, police start knocking the door and me, I said, boy, what are you going to do now? Because the house full of machine gun and drugs. But we never opened the door. Mm -hmm. So they never actually know which house him running at exactly. So we just never opened the door. And the next day, we just pack up my thing and say, yo, dogs, I go too far now, I leave. But I still play the sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You left and where did where do you end up? Um a movie with a girl. Mm -hmm. Cause she was there with me at the house. So see she's the runnings and she said, um, yo, you can come stay by me. You understand? So I'm gonna stay start stay by her and she ended up to be she ended up being my second baby mother. Okay. Yeah. And this was still this was still in um DC. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how did you get from D.C. to Florida? I'm um, a first baby mother now. Mm -hmm. She moved to Florida. And then she called me one day and said, my daughter, I have leukemia. So I just drop everything on me and do. And say, all right, I'm just go. Go live in Miami with my daughter. And then that's how I moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, was it? That's where I hook up with poison that. Okay, so then when you moved to Florida, I guess it was too far to actually still be playing the song from D.C. at that time there. No, it wasn't too far. Well, I was still playing Earthquake in Miami. You were? Yeah, but what happened with Earthquake is that, you know, the Boston getting out trouble and you know how that go with every sound back in those days. Mm -hmm. Them getting out trouble and things start to dissolve. Where a man stop cut dub now, cause them have to pay a lawyer, and man I get deported and uh, all different kind of things. And them leave me with the sound. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't working or nothing. No job. The sound was not make money for me in Florida. So 
we just we just have to move on. <laughs> Come about to poison that. How did you link with Poison Earth now? You know, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I think I just love that sound and I hear them I play and I um, link up with Kirk, see, and the man just said, rate me. Mm-hmm. Then I get enough sound man use me to make a, me and every artist good. So, Poison Dart say, oh, Bobby, put him by the sound and, you know, and me start cutting the dub them for Poison Dart now. So, Red Man was still around the song at that time there? Yeah, and Red Man was like the key to Earthquake. Mm. God, Red Man just take me in like a brother. You see me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just hold a back page because Kirk is he was the man. But I never care because Kirk sent me up enough date. Mm-hmm. You see me? You know that because I said we go to Toronto. We're, we're about to get to Toronto. Don't worry. We're yeah. in there. What year did you get to a poisoner there now? I don't remember. Man, I might get old. Mm-hmm. Would you get... say mid 90s, later 90s? Late, late, late 90s. Late 90s. Okay. Mm-hmm. When you got to Poisoner, so it was just Kirkusy and Redman. Was there anybody else who was on Poisoner at that time there? Kirkusy, Redman, and the owner, the name Father Sket. Mm-hmm. Them are the main people. Yeah. And some, some other little youth still, you know. Kirkusy, uh, Poisoner was a big sound dog. The, mm-hmm. the biggest sound in Florida. Mm-hmm. Them have, them have them own sound. Them, them have them own club. Everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. No problem. Anytime them send me to Jamaica, I cut the bag of money. See me? Gonna go link with them. What were some of the early nights like on Poison Earth now? Do you remember? Ah, every night in a Tampa good. Because I said them have them own club. Tropics and, you know. Oh, Kirk, you see them do it. Them work and them say, all right. Dupes, I will meet Dupes and Bobby play. Cause I brought Dupes and Earthquake, um, Poison Dart. Okay, so then let's, how did you meet Dupes in the first place uh, to even bring him to Poison Earth? Dupes used to play a song in Rhythm Style. Mm-hmm. And he, used, he actually linked with Kirk C before me, but he never played Poison Dart. He just used to change them rhythm mm-hmm. and the remixes for them. And and um, I just say, I just, I just noticed Dub's talent, and up to this day, I don't meet nobody as talented as that that half Chinese guy. Mm-hmm. And um, I noticed Dub's talent, and I said, I said to Kurt, if you bring the soup and poison that, you can give him a different look, and that's exactly what Kurt did. Mm-hmm. Is it me? Oh. This time here. So when did you change your name to Bobby Chin? Um, it was it was some poison that mm-hmm. we just change it because every Chinese man them called Chin, and the shot in for Robert is Bobby. So we just change it. Yeah. yeah. So it just it just worked. Yeah, it worked. Now now it's new dopes, courtesy, everybody on this whole now. Yeah. Were you guys, you and Dopes a team right away, or you, he was just on the song and you guys would play wherever or who would link with whoever? No, it first started out with um, Dopes a mix and courtesy attack. Mm-hmm. And that did deadly. That did deadly because now Dopes don't miss when it comes to mixing, dog. Mm-hmm. You see me? But then Kirk had so many dates, he had to give up that option and send Dopes with me. So that's where me and Dub start build our own little name. Mm-hmm. You see me? Yeah, so we start building our own name and people started to request us from Poison Dart. Do you remember check. some of the early places you guys went to? Now, yeah. as the team? Everywhere. Everywhere I can think of. Mm-hmm. Not the the Africas and the Europe and them places and things. Like Inside of the States, basically. Right, exactly. And Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you guys went to Jamaica as Poisoner, you and Dopes. We'll go all places, man. St. Lucia, all over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. As I said, back in those days, Poison Dart was the premier sound of Florida. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and we all live as a family. Cause remember, we live at Miami and Kirk live at Tampa. That's a three hour drive. So every Friday, me and Dubs pack up in a car for drive, go to Tampa, go play. Mm-hmm. And Kirk have date from now till when, even up to this day, Kirk plays seven days a week. You see me? Mm-hmm. No, no, no man can tell me nothing bad about Kirk, you see. Bad, bad dude. Yeah, man, for sure. Wicked selector. And when it comes to business, even a wickeder businessman, too. Of course. Remember, I did have the record shop to everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. D- did you guys get into any clashes when you're on Poisoner, you and you and Dopes? Well, I wouldn't say Dopes. I was in one clash with David Radigan and Poisoner. Okay, so tell me about this now, because so then you bucked him already on earthquake in dc yeah now where was this dance here now but they go on next clash you know with a sound in a um ah uh, sound in a texas name super goal of course go i'm um, gold eating them man yeah 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 mm-hmm. and um the radigan clashes in orlando you know so then now this is you and kirky playing or who was playing Poisoner them that night. Them time that and, and I think dope some mix and them thing then. Mm. Or red, red, red man. Mm. Or somebody, I remember what was. But them time them, Kirkisy just give me a one talk off of the mic. Um, I didn't say something more, I shouldn't say still, but you know. <laughs> what, do I, <laughs> what did you say, Bobby, bro? Roger Gun, like, like, I say, yo, something about him wife there in the hotel, I'm just joke her or something, and yell if your wife hotel and come and dance. And I'm never too, I'm never too pleased with that. <laughs> Not at all, boss. Yeah, but I, I, you remember, you know, the golden rule with the sound, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you, I think as long as you have, you're behind a microphone and a sound, you're allowed to show, say what you want to say because it's that personal. It's not, but you know certain people, and and you know Radigan is one of those people that <sighs> certain like, things will get under his skin right away. Yeah, I'm not like when you call him white man or them type of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, you're young and you're hot and you say things where you shouldn't say, but me and him become great friends after that. Mm-hmm. And what happened in the dance after you made the speech? Fuck, I think he ended up a kill by that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Them time them hot like fire. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? But he remembered me from DC. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. But well, me and I can have him home number. I can call him at any time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes during Christmas I will text him and you know. Just hear him and thing. Oh, the man have nothing. That man has nothing to teach you. I tell you about good things. For sure. Mm. Good there. Another, this is this is a dance that I know well personally because I was there, but I want you to explain this dance to the okay. people. This is the 99 dance when you guys came to Canada. This is now you and Dopes coming to Canada. All yeah. right. This was Poison Dirt, Desert Storm, I think Magnum Force, Diplomat King Turbo, and a couple more songs. And what do you remember about that dance here, Bobby? You know, Diplomat is actually my um my cousin's boyfriend's son, Mikey. You remember Mikey? Of course, Mikey mentioned, boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's my cousin, baby father. You know? Okay. Angie. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the link how Poisoner got to come to Canada for that dancer. I don't remember. I really don't remember. But I know that was a dance. I'll never forget. Me and Dupes. <laughs> I just remember like... Gunshot sad fire like rice. Before we even get there, hold on. We need to build up before we even get there. Yeah. Was that was that your first time in Canada at that time there? Yes. Mm-hmm. First dance. What was it like saying, okay, yeah, you're coming to Canada, come play so What did you think it was going to be like when you're coming up here? I never really worried because I, I had poison that behind me, the dubs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm never, I'm never really worried. We did load it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're never, we're never really worried. You know, when you have, when you go to war, 
and you have guns of Navarone, you know where about none. Mm-hmm. And you go to one of the body selector dopes. You understand? When them time the dopes coward too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, every time you come a Canada back in those days, it's war, you know. I don't know why. One night time, one night time, I fight broke out in a one dance with me and King Turbo, too, I think. And I couldn't find Willie. Mm-hmm. And me and Willie go, Willie just run like thief. Hold on, Bobby. Slow down, the man. Right, still, yeah. We still didn't get through this this dance here in 99. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Did you guys know any of the Salman them when you guys first came up, or you guys were just brand new at that time there? Brand new. I know none of them. Mm-hmm. I never know who big from who small. Mm-hmm. But I got the sense by being in the dance that King Turbo was a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. When you guys got to the dance, though, what do you remember about that dance? It kind of didn't remind me like a New York style dance. Mm-hmm. You know, where people are rolling and, you know, lots of crew, crew, different, different crews, you know what I mean? Um, That's for sure. Yeah. And um, I heard a lot of mumbling behind me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we are trying to play, but you hear man argue. This one I argue, this one I argue, King Turbo, true word mm-hmm. behind our back. Not to we specifically, but you understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel a little tension behind you. <laughs> and I said, oops, oh, I go on, yes, dog. Because we, we that roll with Concord. And we just know something was going to happen. You get that feeling because they're mm-hmm. mature word, you know, but they're not mature word from Kanka himself. They must have mature word from him selected him. Mm-hmm. But you know, and, what if, and this is Desert Storm we're talking about here. Desert Storm. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't, it was we playing? It was Desert Storm play. They might play. And something happened where I think Concord actually walk over and box one of the other youth. And he never just box them. Mm-hmm. Because I think if he box them and know it, it would have all right. But him is the one who fire up all of the damn shot them too. So not only him box them and them, him shoot them up too. Not like shoot up the party, like not, not understand that dog. And then he is the one. Say, my drop us home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a dupes. <laughs> that's a dupes. You know, Mr. Dupes, you know, Uber for your thing, dog. Remember those times? There was no Uber those times. You might could find a taxi bus. Yeah, but where's that thing about Uber? Them time, like, anywhere out of that place. Because, boy, mostly, yo, you were there. Of course. Glass was just a shutter. Because of the gunshot, them people up on the ground are dupes can tell you this. Me and dupes up on the ground. And every time we look up, is somebody walk over with a gun in them hand. So I, I said to my dupes, how the freak so much gun getting at this dance? Hmm. Then I don't know where dupes find my passport. I'm on the ground with dupes and dupes. I said, Bobby, see your passport here. Like a drop out of the bugger or something, I said, right in. Hmm. And then, you know, we just, well, finally, when it came to a calm, we just, I don't remember who carried us outside and put us in a, just, just take us home. And then the next morning, I think it was the same diplomat in a mic, you know. Mm-hmm. Next morning, them couldn't even get out of the sound, you know that. Because yellow, sure. yellow tape was right around the whole venue. Mm-hmm. Forensic everything, but nobody died. No, nobody died. But that was like, a, I remember we listened to that audio like a million times, and that was like fifty odd shot that bust that that night there, you know, boss. Yo, that was crazy, lad. I mean, all the bucket if I had in DC, and all the gunman, they never hear so much shot. I'm gonna say Canada. My God, 
you would and you, that's the last thing you're expecting especially coming from where you're coming from you're coming from DC, exactly miami and these places you're not expecting to come to canada and this is going to happen that's that's not even in your thought of things going to nope. happen because yeah, all, I mean. all of my family in canada is actually decent people mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you know when you're, you're in jamaica you have family in canada it means like the bougie type like you know oh mm -hmm. canada is so clean the McDonald's, they don't put so much salt on the fries, and you know, yeah. uh, you don't have that much liquor stores. When we live in a DC liquor store, I'm in my bedroom. Mm -mm. No, nah, man, that's not ours, is government regulated. Over yeah. there, it's just anybody opens a thing. And but, but, but to, to be honest with you, Canada mm -hmm. had back in those days, work apart from the, the crime and the shootings. Mm -hmm. It had a cleaner standard of living mm -hmm. than the United States of America. Believe it or not. For sure. You know, back in those days, every little youth I grew up wanted to see Owen Roberts hmm. and go to his church. Not sure. <laughs> yeah. Canada was the place, you know. I actually went to Canada before I actually got to the US. Like I tell you, most of my family is from Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you never, you never stayed out here or anything like. That. Like I would spend summers there. Got you. Yeah. Because even that same dancer, that was the first time that I even knew that there was any, not even a black Chinese, but this was the first time I knew that Dopes was making remixes because he had given Magnum Force that bounty remix on the um, "Hate Me Now." Yeah, All right? yeah, yeah. That was the first time we heard of. Anybody doing that, he said, yo, this shit is wicked. But you guys didn't play it. He played it first, but you guys played some remixes after. But that was the first time we started to hear about what you guys were doing. And I don't think it was called Black China. This time it was just remixes you guys were doing. No, it wasn't called Black China. Mm -hmm. the, the the first name me and Dupes get was Ping and Pong. Yes. <laughs> I never liked it at all. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know, just ping and pong, ping and pong, ping and pong, ping and pong. And then, you know, mm -hmm. eventually changed to Black Chinese because a bounty killer. So then that's, so then Dopes was making the mixes while you guys were on Poison Dart. You're still emceeing and doing your stuff. Though. So then when did you guys totally break away and start doing your own thing now? After Dopes released Black Chinese 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, um. Uh, then the name Black Chinese started to get bigger. Mm -hmm. And Dubs, Dubs never leave me out in that muscle. He never leave me out of nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he may, he may cooperate me with the sound and everything. And um, Actually, the Black in the Chinese was a guy called Richard Flores, mm -hmm. who is actually the manager for Shani Mio right now on Busy Signal and, and okay. Style G. Style yeah. G. Yeah. But yeah. he was originally the, he was the black. Right. Mm -hmm. He couldn't play music or nothing, but he just was the black in the chain. Mm -hmm. So then you guys started stuff there because when I spoke to Dopes, he said that you guys were making the mixes, doing your stuff, but it wasn't until, as you were telling me, you guys. <coughs> yeah, go and on. It wasn't until you guys got to Jamaica and started to cut the actual dubs and bounty pointed out to you guys, say, hey, listen, Bobby Chin and Super Dopes are the selectors, and Black Chinese is the sound. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I'm going to say that for true. Mm -hmm. So we'll just take it up. So what was your transition like moving from Poison Earth to Black Chinese? Oh, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how to describe it. Muscle. Mm -hmm. We moved from two little youth wearing the same clothes, shopping at Marshalls, being best of friends, to being on a plane every single week. We never used to that. Uh, some places where I go, we don't know. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's just people say, call me, call me, call me. And it was too fast. 
to be honest okay. with you. Okay, we're going to go through that journey there. Do you remember yeah. the first time you guys got a call to actually play Black Chinese? Not Poisoner, no. The peep, somebody wants you guys to play what they're hearing on this CD. Yeah, Miami. It was Miami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we saw a party named Stages. Mm -hmm. Which Stages actually started Dream Weekend, um, ATI. Okay. The whole Negro weekend. I shouldn't say dream, but the whole the whole ATI weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so locally we'll, we'll build up for name big, big, big locally. And then you know, Miami is a party haven. Mm -hmm. So promoters from different islands would come to Miami just a carnival and and you know, come to stages, bubbles and naked and those parties. So from there now, a promoter will come to Miami and say, Black China play with 3,000 people. They want to know who this Black China. Mm -hmm. So, we start getting the islands first. You know? Where, the, where was the first island that you guys went to? St. Lucia. To me, yeah, St. Lucia. How was that? <laughs> crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then we start with Grenada, St. Kitts, um, Virgin Islands. We became the king of the Virgin Islands. Of Virgin Islands, okay. St. Croix and St. Thomas. I was just there that day. Mm -hmm. Tartola, British Virgin Island. Um, them time they wouldn't start the Costa Rica and Panama thing yet. Mm -hmm. And, um, we conquer all of them like an island, Antigua, Bermuda. Oh, hmm. just you, you, you two black China first dancing at Bermuda, you saw Matt about. That's what probably Soldier One them, Magic them? I saw him Playboy. Playboy, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Playboy, they were the one basically doing what you guys were doing, but they were doing in Bermuda with the remixes and all this right. stuff. Right, right. Mm. Soldier How One was more that? clash, clash. Yes. It was Ram, 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 Ram. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the dance done. I was standing up outside and uh, somebody run a light and hit somebody off a scooter. Mm. Like really bad. And I remember Dupes walking over to the person and to look. And I said, Dupes, how you do that? I can't see that. Mm. The person mash up. Mm -hmm. I must say, Dupes walk over and look, look on the person. I said, Boy, Dupes should I really be the doctor for you. We couldn't do it. But yeah, Bermuda was our place for a long while. Mm -hmm. You know? What was it like now the first time you guys going to go play in Jamaica? Remember everything I tell you, muscle? We can put my hand on a Bible and swear to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We hook up with DJ Khaled. And at this point, Dupes is huge mm -hmm. with, with the remixes. And Dupes went to Jamaica with Khaled for fully loaded. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't playing, but in the other remixes, and you know, Khaled have him on the stage. You know that I was one of the persons in the crowd. You were in the crowd. I'm in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, Kelly never know me that good. Mm -hmm. Just no dopes. So me, just proud of my brother. I said, me have to go. Mm -hmm. I'm in the crowd. And I tell you, a piece of rain come down. Like, I get soaked from my head to my toe. Because I don't know where to run go. Everybody else around up and and Kelly demolished that that beach. Mm -hmm. Like I've never seen a sound demolish a crowd. It was Whitecliffe, Mataran, and Kelly. A clash. But Kelly take that hands down. That's why bus, that's the first fully loaded Kelly bus. Mm -hmm. I must let as there's a God up in heaven. I'm standing in the crowd and I'm looking at Dukes on the stage and Kelly. And the year after, it was me and Dupes on the stage. That's crazy, last. <laughs> yeah. 
It was me and Dubs on the stage taking fully loaded. Okay, let's take that because this is a pivotal time in the whole Black Chinese saga right here. Yes. Was this the year 2002? Yes. Okay, so this was the one where you guys had cut some share on Burke Dubs. Yes. Uh, about was, paying people. Right, and that was the, the year where Ashanti and Jarul was on that show. Yes. Okay, so then what was what was it like now going from being in the crowd, seeing dopes and Caledon matching the place to now you're on stage? What was that like now? That was very scary to me mm -hmm. because full and order is a very hostile dance. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at at least 30 sounds playing before you. And you're looking at each sound that make a mistake get battle. Mm -hmm. You understand? I remember a sound from New Jersey come there and then play, my neck, my back, lick my, yo, I'm out of buckle when I start fling. Yeah. So I said to the dubs, don't make them the mistake in the dog. Just go through the box carefully and make sure say no loose song that in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, um, we were like the enemy now to other sounds because we're dangerous. So every sound plot against me mm -hmm. for us not to get dubs. But the genius that dubs and me was back in those days. We used the artists that never, but nobody wanted to use. Mm -hmm. The Danny English eggnog. Sharon Burke will bring my money. Black China going Danny. We write them thing there now. <coughs> boom, bam, bam. Sharon Burke bring my money. Um, um, fully loaded on the rough face. Sharon Burke, as I say, you remember that? Of course. Black China, yo, we we'll just use what, what, what. what. We we'll just use all we could I get. So how come the artists weren't giving you guys dubs at that time there? Because we play against Mataran mm -hmm. and Fire Links them and the whole of them. So they get what them, them not them them want them shine. But weren't you guys getting all the dubs before all of this coming up to this point here? Wasn't Black Chinese cutting all these dubs here? Yeah, but whenever I get the fully loaded customs. Mm. But you are you're a bounty killer, do you know? Mm. Because I'm going to kill the loyal to me now. Mm -hmm. never give away the dub them till fully loaded actually are gone. Mm -hmm. You understand? While fully loaded is in progress is when Bounty yeah. Killer come to the hotel and give us dubs. Mm -hmm. So how you work with something like that? Cause you know your dub you want to get that early and prepare and load it up and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but him still not gonna leave you. Busy signal do the same thing too. Mm -hmm. Elephant man do the same thing. Um all of the heads. All, all of the head them do the same thing. All of the man what did hot. Yeah. But God work in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. And why did you guys decide to cut those songs about Sharon Burke and money at this first fully loaded year now? You know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. It was never about me, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the one who get the blame for everything. But if you notice, there are three people on the stage, right? Mm -hmm. So you think I could have cut a dub? And this Sharon Burke and Dubs no know Willie don't know. Or who else did they never know? I don't think Willie was wrong at this. No, Willie wasn't wrong at this. It was it just was, you and Tinger. It was just you and Dubs. It was Willie was wrong for the second one. The second mm -hmm. is. We're, hold on. We're going to get to that second one. Don't worry. But I want to yeah. get through this first one here first. Why you guys would even think that was because, remember, this is Sharon Burke's dance, you know. You understand? So I don't know why you guys would decide to let's go against the promoter in her own dance. All right. The first the first one wasn't re really any disrespectful. It was more of a 
Um, show and broke, bring my money. Black China Grand Dunny. Um, it, it wasn't, it was more of like a gimmick. Mm -hmm. The second one, because take, look at it this way. After the first one, mm -hmm. if we did this, or she wouldn't book it for the second one. Okay, but then that's what I'm getting to say. But the first one, remember, this is where Mataran is Mr. Fully Loaded. Did Mataran get to play that Fully Loaded? Nah, police lock it off. Okay, so then how come they really said, basically, you guys took Fully Loaded, even though Mataran didn't play that year? So mostly if me and you, if I am playing in a dance with you, mm -hmm. I play good and police lock it off. Then we'll take it. Mm -hmm. That that must me. So then it's just being judged on not the fullness of everybody plays so okay, this man here. You, it's just basically being judged up until the police locked it off. Whatever happened pre that well, well you can't judge it the after the, you can't judge it after the police locked it's it. Not off. even not even after, you know, but it's just like sometimes you say, Okay, we're gonna wash this here and we'll come back next year and do what we're doing since you got lock off. But they decided, nah man, Black Chinese did so good this year that we're giving you the dance this year here. Right. But our next thing too is could Mataran have caught those forwards up? No. We're talking about Mr. Fully Loaded here, you know. I'm going to catch up them forward. I don't care who him is. Mm -hmm. I couldn't catch up those forwards mm -hmm. if I was Mataran. Yeah. It, it was just... The whole beat just turned over. Him, him probably could have catch back some forward, yes. Because he always said to me, well, I'm the lucky, I'm the lucky. And me. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we're catching back at Miami, right? You forget? Of, listen, okay. This is this is the clash of the loaded. You understand exactly, exactly. What happened in that dance here now? In Miami, mm -hmm. him come it was for Fort Cl Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, him, him come for clash because him, him still vexed about the fully loaded. I will beat him again. Mm -hmm. We'll beat him. That was the one where you guys were taking some of the Mataran samples and putting it in the dub and mashing right. Up them with right. it. Right, right, exactly. We'll beat him again. Mm -hmm. And then we have Nasheen Fire Select for him. Oh, it was Fire selecting them time there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the second dance now was a big setup in a Mandeville. Mm -hmm. well, to me personally, I think we played better in the Mandeville one because we had a lot of dub with him name. But <laughs> in the them days, they didn't kill matter in a Mandeville. Never. Mm -hmm. well, we, we just realized that too late. Mm hmm. I mean, we get we forward them. The sound never play good, but him come in and turn over the place terribly. Mm -hmm. And su surprisingly, the sound play good for him. But you know, Mataran is Mataran. Great, 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 great. For sure. So it was only two times you guys really got to clash like that, which was the Fort Lauderdale and Mandeville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Just have a, him just have a respect for me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and same way, we respect him, same way, because enough people don't know this, but I me mean first carry a around go America. Explain this to me, Bobby. When they play inner city, mm -hmm. earthquake brought them. Uh, Mataran and my cousin is best friends, you know, you know that. I uh, used name Nikki. Mm -hmm. What did they put earthquake to us? Uh, you know, it was power with the sound. Mm -hmm. And I think Dragon them never have them visa at the time, so them send Mataran. And from then we realized that you tell bad. Cause the way the man mix and who he talk. I said, no, that Lakuta is a full package. Mm -hmm. Mataran was always two step of everybody, ahead of everybody. The man actually did a remix with a Madonna thing right now the dance. And I said, dog. This youth are bad. Remember the matter of a mix before him, ta him start talking? You know? you know that? He was a mixer. Yeah, man, for sure. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah. But I feel the same mix him bad. It was just what by the time he got to Addy's, face was mixing already. So then, right. Finger. Exactly. But then remember, there was times where face went to jail or face wasn't real wrong or that to split up. My right, right, was right, mixing right. and talking. Yeah, man. Terrible youth. Yeah, man, from time. 
you guys doing your things. This is okay. I'm not sure about these timelines here. You're going to clear it up here now. You guys are doing your stuff here. Enough stuff for happening. But I know one time you guys became so big that you guys were actually getting like death threats from Jamaica. People were emailing you guys death threats and these stuff. What had happened there? We get that all the time. Mm -hmm. And Dupes actually wanted to come out of the the music world because of that. And I said, Dupes, you know what? I'm used to them thing here, like, not because somebody are threatening you, mean them can actually do you something. Mm -hmm. So most of it is just talk, but some of it was actually true. Why why were you getting the threats though? What was the what was the issue? What were they saying? Why what were they upset with? One threat was coming from a go for you from New York mm -hmm. over a remix that Dubs did. But me end up, me, I end, I ended solving that because I know the the people him. Mm -hmm. Um a next set was from fully loaded. I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say where it's coming from, but mm -hmm. police tell me. Mm -hmm. You understand? But you don't know what in them days. Uh, you either crumble or you stand strong. Mm -hmm. You see me? And I think Black China was just too good of a sound, too popular of a sound. Why some little negative bad mind things start happening. Because mm -hmm. you guys took off so fast. Yes. It's like you're not supposed to bust so big and so quick. Mm -hmm. And we there how long I wait. Isn't it? Me? Because you guys basically came up with the blueprint for what a major laser is doing right now. Where you guys became so big, where you became not even a song, you guys became a show. Yeah. You understand? That was where. Again, Major Laser understood the blueprint of what it is that they do, where they go to these festivals and have festivals yeah. built around them because they're now a show. They're now an act. Uh, that is true. Big up Diplo. Mm -hmm. We and them always have that good reasoning. Mm -hmm. And you have to admire, you know, most of them tell you something, you notice. You can be bad man, you know. Mm -hmm. But when somebody is great, you have to acknowledge greatness you understand major laser is great you understand 100 mm -hmm. we're on the same jamaica time here now. <coughs> now i know you guys got back was it 2007 you guys got back to fully loaded no yeah okay so it was a uh, five years in between when you guys first played to when you guys got back yeah okay this is the real this is the real issue here now. Now, the first one, you guys were just poking fun of Sharon Burke and the money. But now it seemed like you guys really turned it up a, to a whole different level now. What had happened in that one there? Same thing. Mm -hmm. They had a hotel. I caught them. I don't have nothing. I mean, I'm going to state this. I have nothing personal against Sharon Burke. Mm -hmm. I'm an entertainer. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that we did was did well we did it out of good intentions thinking that all right th this is my goal you know muscle if we say we are going against sharon burke mm -hmm. then i had to start that sharon burke would go up against us mm -hmm. i shall have bounty killer shall have wally djs so I cut back some dub and kill me. And then make fully loaded bigger, wrong or right? I, I could see, but you have to remember, if that's a plan, that's still a one-sided plan where you guys know the plan. She probably, unless you guys express this to her, she doesn't know what the plan is. Uh, no, she never know. <laughs> 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 but would I just think as a business person, if I was for Sharon Burke, I'd say, oh, them want this me, all right, me, I'll kill them back. Mm -hmm. All right, where's fully loaded today? Where's fully loaded today? 
gone by the wayside like a lot of big events that went by the wayside at that time there. And when was the next Fully Loaded after we got shown out? Hold on, before we even get there. So then for that performance, you guys basically got banned because of that performance there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because remember, listen, when I said you took it to a whole new level, this is when you, you had the shirt. You understand you guys cut the bugle at a whole heap of word. This is Bryce, uh? Yes, the Bojo to it's like Bryce, uh? I, yeah. This is kind of you guys are going, you guys are going hard right now. Oh uh, well, all right. You know that Sharon Burke hook up with Bojo after him come out of jail, right? Mm -hmm. So if Bojo could have done this you upon a dub, how come you end up back with Bojo because of money? Mm -hmm. So the same thing with Black Chinese. You could have made, she could have made a whole heap of money out of this thing. You understand? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, I can't tell somebody how to take on this. And we did apologize to her. Okay. Out of good faith. You know, and we don't know, before all of this, me and Sharon Burke was so good. Mm -hmm. You see me? And I don't have nothing against Sharon Burke, that because... She, she, back in those days, she was the genius of those kind of parties. For sure. Yeah. You have to give her credit. Do you, you know? think, you, do you think you guys might have took it a bit too far on that one there? Well, if I never take it too far, I wouldn't have to apologize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess that's a yes then. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, I forgot about the dubs. Okay. But when I seen the shirt too, I said, whoa. And I mean. But it said, I, Sharon Burke. We never even actually spell out the word the right way. It wasn't really spelled out. Right. Mm -hmm. But people knew what it meant. Of course. And if I, if I have to do it again, mm -hmm. I will apologize to her. Mm -hmm. Sharon Burke, good, you know. Sha yo. Of course, right. bro. She should come to Belize. You know, some of her bellies, right? Mm-hmm. She come to Belize and she come to shine and whatever. And no problem with that. If me was a madman, you don't know it already. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you guys are doing all this stuff. Did you guys start producing at this time here too? No. Yet. You guys didn't start producing yet? No. So after this whole uproar at Fully Loaded and stuff, what was you guys' next move now? Where did you guys, what did you guys end up doing? With us a tour. Japan. China, Africa. Just, just a tour all over the place. Tour, 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 tour. What were those tours, especially you brought up those three countries. What was it like your first time in a place like China, Africa, and Japan? Especially somewhere like China. China was weird because me and Dupes always wanted to go to the motherland. Mm -hmm. I would say. We always wanted to go and try the food and you know. Mm -hmm. But the food was nasty. <laughs> it's like we see a man a jerk some chicken on the side, right? Yeah. So we could get some jerk chicken on the side of the road. When the man opened the pan, it's only duck head in it. <laughs> like, you. So we decide no more. So say, all right, screw this. Mm -hmm. uh, Down with the motherland now. Let's go to Kentucky in the motherland. Mm -hmm. We'll go get Kentucky. We'll say teriyaki chicken. <laughs> Not even fry. Teriyaki chicken, you know, like, nah. Uh. Mm -hmm. But the crowd turned out. Mm -hmm. It was a huge crowd and a lot of Jamaicans. You know, we never really take it that serious, but a lot of Jamaicans shop there for them stores in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So they're actually there. Wasn't there? Mm-hmm. Well, it was uh, one of the most amazing dance, and they had a um, a warm welcome for us. Yeah. Cake, everything, and more teriyaki chicken. Were you guys one of one of the first songs to go to China? Mm, I think maybe the only song. Mm -hmm. I can't recall of an next song. I, you know what? We start. You know, most of them start. Everyone because we get so big, no, we start ask the promoters. Which other sound ever come here? Them said no other sound. 
like in a, a place in a Switzerland, mm-hmm. we up in the hills when me and Dupsco play. We say, which other sound come here? Them say, no other sound. The closest sound that come close to it mm-hmm. is Stone Love. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stone Love come very close to some of the like, you know. Mm-hmm. How about Africa now? What was this like here now, going to Africa to go play, not to perform like you're, a, like you're an artist, to go play dubs and remix? What was that like now, going to Africa? That dance was actually amazing, but I couldn't. You know me as a gallus, right? But I walk in the club and I couldn't differentiate this girl from this girl because all of them have braids. Mm-hmm. It was only that some of them brown braid and some of them black braid. And I said, well, I said to I said, wait, what, what is Brady season? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it was nice. We were brought there by Heineken and stuff. And okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't care what nobody wants to say about Africa. I think it's one of the most amazing places in the world. And Africans support their own. Mm-hmm. Look at Whiskey. Look at Burner Boy. You know? Mm-hmm. They don't need nobody else to make a concert for them artists. They support their own artists, 200,000 people. They have the numbers, bro. They, ha- they have the numbers. That's true. You know why? Because condoms in Africa are expensive. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what causes all of them problems in Africa is they have these magnum extra large. Mm-hmm. Not everybody in Africa is large, so the condom will go slip off on the girl or get pregnant. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it right there. So even then now, even Japan, first time in Japan now, what was this like? Why, you have a, why as I mentioned, condom, you go to Japan. Yes, the condoms there fit us perfectly. Mm-hmm. Especially the ones at the 7-Eleven. Them have these little teeny condoms here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the fuck? You say, you know, first time you see the condom, you said this mighty crown really had the <laughs> 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 The first time in Japan was with Bass Odyssey. With Bass Odyssey out there? Yeah. Yeah, that's the very first dance we ever played in Japan. It was crazy. Was it Squingy and Mark or who was it? Oh, I don't remember. I think it was, it's, remember, it's two Bass Odyssey and back in the That's true too, you know. Yeah, it was the other one. The Bonnie, Bonnie Bass Odyssey. You know what? Because they, there was some, they had a Japan connection, you're right. The, other, yes. the next side, they had a strong Japan link at one time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the dance was crazy. It was ram, 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 ram. And then ever since Japan fell in love with us, mm-hmm. and that's it. We've been to Japan like so many times. Yeah. I have a son over there that has a son named Yars. Look out for that son. Yars. What if a super cat don't play it? What? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what was this experience like for like two kids that's just... Because did you guys actually plan for this to happen or this just happened overnight and you guys were just off and running? Um, overnight, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, me and Dupsa go to Japan and we said, yeah, mm-hmm. who must carry out with this time? Mm-hmm. We carry Richie D, mm-hmm. one year. We carry Walchi, we carry Special G, we carry Adi. But Willie was always with us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because... Willie would have string up everything and then make dupes play. Willie was more like a, you know, assistant at the time. Yeah. It was always you and dupes. Willie was around. So then how did Walsh get in get involved with the song now? So what? <laughs> you wanna know how Walsh get involved? Mm-hmm. We're in Miami playing. And Walsh had talked on the mic for somebody else. And me and Dupes in the parking lot. And I said to Dupes, Dupes said, Bobby, who the brother inside there try to copy you? And I said, I don't know what in bad. Mm-hmm. And me hire one chip on Black Chinese. Because Dupes never like him. What? Yep, Dupes never like him in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then him just fit in with us, and then him and Dupes became the best of friends. Even better friends than me. Now I'll start getting jealous. Cause now dupes are using for talk on the mic and naked and them thing there and 
four little babbage in a fair use will you know mm -hmm. you understand yeah. because i know eventually the team split up because it was you it was you and dopes at first and then you seen dopes and walshi and yeah. then you and willie i want to tell you but really did i um, admire yeah yeah willie the willie and walshi team them did bad mm -hmm. because them are the one used to go canada you remember that of course yes them Walchi was one of the greatest additions we ever had. And mm -hmm. the next shoot them Chipley. You remember Chipley? Yes. Yeah. And them did them did just make my life easier because Walchi can tell you this. Mm -hmm. Anytime me in a dance I talk, no matter which dance, could I be the biggest dance at Miami. As Walchi walked through the door, I say, yo, Walchi, where you and give him the mic and me go about my business. Mm -hmm. Cause Walchi had a standard that wouldn't drop. Mm -hmm. When I give him the button, you see him bold style him a going. And I don't think Walchi bad now, you know. Back in all them days, the man have some speech like, uh, up to this day, I still use some of Walchi style him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Walchi is great. Beyond. Wicked, wicked. Oh. When it comes to everything there so when did thing there when did production now start to come into into the fold um one day we went to jamaica dupes dupes always a billion little rhythm them you know but they never sound good to be honest with you mm -hmm. but we go jamaica now and we're sitting around this big table breakfast table in holiday in and it was a show that Danger Zone keep with a lot of international artists. And sitting at our breakfast table was a man called Mr. Morgan, mm. which is Dupe's manager right now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how we start interact with him. But whenever I pay him the mind, because we just think of one like a Jewish man, you know? But we'll play that Margaritaville. And there was a couple just jumping up and down in front of us. We were DJing. And the black china big. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, you guys are good DJs. And I would never pay them the mind. Either, I would think of white people now. Me and Dupes never, ever, ever, ever fly first class. Mm -hmm. But it just so happened that we had extra money. Right? So I said, Dupes, we could try the first class thing. He never wanted it. Mm -hmm. And me said, Dupes, we could just upgrade the ticket. Them tell me, you're Jamaica. We we'll upgrade the ticket. And sitting beside us in first class was that white girl and that white man. Hmm. Just to find out that white man was Nick Anderson and the girl was Nicole from the Pussycat Dolls. And I think, if I can remember clearly, yeah. We start link with them. I think him buy dupes in first laptop. And then him and dupes going to some production thing. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it gone. Which one came out first? Was it Copa that came out first or Drumline? Copa. Copa. This is a massive rhythm. So then how did this change everything for you guys at this time when this rhythm came out here now? All right. So the Copa rhythm now. Um, me voice most of them sang then. What do you mean? Uh, back in them days, I me go Jamaica go voice the thing them. Okay. I, mean, I remember being at the gully side with Movado. Mm -hmm. I'm a play the rhythm theme. And at them time, him and Carter did have a little beef. Mm hmm was it the Copa Rhythm? No, nah, man. The beef is on the drum line. Oh, yeah. No, the Copa Rhythm... The Copa Rhythm... Was with the elephant, man. Mm-hmm. For the elephant, make them dance, make them dance. Me and Willie write that. Well, actually, it's my idea. And then we'll get the elephant, man. How did you come up with something like that? 
But does it always like that sound from from going to um Sunday school? Mm-hmm. It's two sound like elephant on the rhythm, and then yeah. came the elephant elephant heart like fire. Mm-hmm. My one next song on the rhythm was um, "Girl Shake Your Booty." Yes, yeah, the game that song there too. Yeah, elephant was like best of friends, you know. You know that. Because it was really who gave you guys your first set of dubs was Beanie Man and Elephant Man. Those were the first two artists to really that give is you true. guys the dubs. Mm-hmm. That is a hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. Elephant Man was there for us every step of the way. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't say that anymore. But <laughs> we still, we still talk to him. Still talk to him. You know, like I want to go me most of my keep a relationship with every artist that want to be friends with me. Mm-hmm. You see me. I have loyal artist that like loyal uh, uh, ride or die. You see my dog cause uh, I never change. I always I always link every artist. Them just them just know me as a madman, you see me? <laughs> yeah. Bobby Chin. So when the Copa rhythm came out, did, did this really change you guys' profile at this time here now? Yeah, because that's the first rhythm that will produce. For yourself. Mm-hmm. You see, me, Dupes, Dupes have other rhythm, you know. I have the Sunshine rhythm mm-hmm. with the Jack, the Jack here. Yes. Jamaica. I have the Blind, the blind to You. Um, Kali Kali, yeah. Yo, Dupes have only one song, one and I know about it. I <laughs> have the Mary J. Blige, each tier. Mm-hmm. I have the John Legend, Bojo. Mm-hmm. So when he started to produce at this time, did he start to kind of back off coming on the road or he was still on the road as hard when he was doing this? He was on the road hard the same way. He mm-hmm. was on the road hard. But as he get older, he just make that transition. Mm-hmm. You see me? So I, I, I couldn't just leave the sound because if me and him leave the sound together, then where does that leave the sound? Got you. So, you brought it up earlier. <clears throat> yeah. Drumline. All right. How did you guys come up with this now? And the thing with drumline is this is where Mavado and Cartel has the issue now. And both of them has a song on you guys' rhythm. So where did this leave Black Chinese when you guys started to produce that, that rhythm there now? That rhythm is solely dopes. I don't know when come up with that idea. Mm-hmm. Him just him was I watched the movie Drumline. Mm-hmm. And him, him just because I'm genius, him just build a rhythm half it. So now I went to Jamaica now for link my father. I play the rhythm for him and <clears throat> him up on the gully, sit down on the gully and my father um start seeing because them tell me him and cartel have a little friction, you know. Mm-hmm. I de- I never wanted, I never wanted a um a, a clash song on the rhythm. You know what I mean? That was my intention. Mm-hmm. Cause I know if you put a clash on the rhythm, what's what is going to happen is that people are going to play the two songs that clash and don't pay attention to the rest, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, but him start sing, sing. Then him say, "Bobby, go to the hotel right now, go voice." So me, him, footer, and about thirty man from the gully, fit in a one hotel room, and. Him did I sing it for me from the gully, you know, him I say, Junie and Finn Farmer, Mr. Palmer, Grovin's Fimi X5. That's why I'm singing that song, yeah. Mm-hmm. So why? The man advice that I'm gonna send it back to dopes. And dopes listen to the song. And dopes them now. Link it with Mr. Morgan. And Mr. Morgan Carl Cartel, I think. And cartel voice four counteraction. We we'll only use one. Okay. None of them fussy they can call Mr. Palmer in Farmer. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah. It just take off from the sound. That was a drum line. <laughs> and did it where did it leave the song now? Did it leave the song where it's either Cartel one and you choose his side or Mavada one and you choose their side? Or did you just seen it as production at that time there? No, I'm gonna see it as production. Mm-hmm. Cartel is my virgin, Mavada is my virgin. That will never change. Mm-hmm. Me and Cartel is like this. Mm-hmm. 
How did you even link with Cartel in the first place? Through Dan. Mm-hmm. Remember Dan Carleone? Of course. Yeah, so Cartel used to go up there and thing. And Dan Carleone, this is Mona again. Mm-hmm. My house, Master Lee house, Chazzy T them. Then Dan Carleone is the next road. Mm. You understand? So I saw we link up with Cartel and him come round to our the first time I meet Cartel, him get dubs 30 dub one time. Mm-hmm. I will ac- will accidentally deleted, accidentally de- deleted like 10 of them by mistake. So yeah. That's how we meet Cartel and him just click with you know what I mean. At first, me and him never could I never agree. Mm-hmm. You see me? Cause yes. In cost me, I say me an alliance and all them things there. Mm-hmm. But I say, me say Cartel, you can say me is alliance, yes, but guess what? When I met you, you were alliance too. <laughs> so it's fear. Fear, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not give a bounty killer for nobody. Did you guys do any production with bounty or it was just remixes you guys did? Remix. We never, I never produced a song with bounty killer yet. I mean, I, the, how come? I don't know. We don't really know enough. Mm-hmm. Bounty is not a friendly person like that. You know? And we like friends because we don't like pay money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Bounty Killer is forever our God. For sure. You know? Even if I don't talk to him, I don't say nothing to him. Mm-hmm. You know? Him just know when him see me, him still have a heal me. And we respect him. Just like being a man. Mm-hmm. See me? Both you are the same thing. Right there. So when, when it came to production, you were more the one doing the recording the vocals and Dopes was doing more producing the beat and all those stuff there. If it was being recorded in Jamaica, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but Dopes, yeah. Dopes was build a beat and him said, Bobby, go on to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just go, I'm just do my thing. Yeah, of course, I wanted a flight to go look for my family. Mm-hmm. You see me? Yeah. Mm. All that stuff there. All right, you guys are doing good stuff, amazing stuff, flying right across the globe and stuff. But this was one black eye on your career. This is one of your first early black eyes. When you end up getting incarcerated, what was the issue, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> But if some but if some candy out of our store. <laughs> but he, it, it can't be that simple, bro. <sighs> it's even worse than that. Mm-hmm. You know, being famous attracts a lot of negativity around you. Mm-hmm. And, but I always didn't want to tell people this, but nobody ever asked me the truth. Mm-hmm. I went to a place called TJ Maxx, close to my house. To buy bed sheets, mm-hmm. and on a few occasions, this guy that worked in there, he was like, "Oh, you're a black Chinese. So get me some tickets to go in this party or that party, and get some discount." On three occasions, him give me discount, mm-hmm. right? I never know what he was doing, but just take my discount and cut. Apparently, he had people coming in the store and taking out stuff and walking out with it, and police was watching him. Mm. So I just get caught up in the whole mix. So police come to my house. This actually changed my life, you know. Mm-hmm. Police come to my house. I wasn't there. I was in Atlanta doing a show, and somebody called me, and, and I called about the police, and I said, what happened? He said, I need to come and talk to him. I said, why? He said, uh, we'll have you as a part of a scheme to rob stores. Imagine this. Mm. Somebody will tell me I'm a part of a scheme to rob stores and I'm playing the world famous black Chinese. I was stealing bed sheets. <laughs> wow. Now, Mosa, mm. I never know what to do. Mm. So, me hire a lawyer, ended up paying this lawyer around 20 grand mm. just for them to throw it out. But it changed my whole life. What do you mean by that? I never knew what was going to happen. So I set up myself in Belize mm. in case anything was to happen. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would have somewhere at least where I could have what, you know, a new start at life. You understand? Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible from the day when my lawyer tell me to turn myself. And I went to the police station in Coral Springs. I'll never forget this. Mm-hmm. So the police guy was like, why you don't just talk to me? And the lawyer told me before I turned him, I said, do not talk to them. You don't, you have the right not to say anything to them. Mm-hmm. So well, the police get mad with me now. He put me in a cell, he blocked the window where I can't see out. He call a cell in there and he tell my lawyer, Oh, don't worry. One hour process and you can bail him out and stuff. That one hour went to like almost a whole night and day. Hmm. No, I never know nothing about these things enough. I never know the charges against me. I don't know my co-defendants. I just know it's a guy that work in the store. The first cell that them put me in after them, when you get locked up in, in Coral Springs, in Broad County, you have to process yourself there. Mm-hmm. Then you go to the main jail downtown Broad. Mm-hmm. So I get to the main jail with 10 men string up to me. In on the back of a patty wagon. When I get there now, it's like a bullpen. So I, I go in a cell. And then, I don't know, I see this guy come in the cell. I said, this guy look like a woman. Because hmm. he's here straight and he's talking like a girl. And he have breasts, but he's a man. So I said, Frig, what is dog? Yo, muscle as the gate open. But run going to one next cell. All right, so I'm comfortable now. <laughs> muscle, 10. 10 criminal in there now, no matter about murderer, people will get charged for this, that. Everybody sit down there and I say, yo, what you in here for? Mm-hmm. Oh, murder. What you in here for? Cocaine charge. What you, come round to me, you know, what you, miss a murder. <laughs> you can't, you can't say, I'm in here for bed sheets. No, well, no, I can't, you're crazy, but we kill enough sound. Is that a murder that? But that, but Bobby, that's not why you're in here, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> then you have this little white man now, him under my skin. Mm-hmm. As soon as I get a little sandwich or a apple, I want it. So I have to give it to him. No. Mm-hmm. They say, everybody, I get this little number. <laughs> and with that number, you can um, you can make a phone call or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Me not nah get no number now. So I said, wait, what is? Oh, me alone not nah get no number. So I go to the, the officer in charge and he say, you don't get a number because we're moving you to a different facility because you're diabetic. Mm-hmm. So me said, the same little white man said, don't worry, you're going to a better jail. Da, da, da. He said, all right, good. Transfer me now to a different jail now. Me thinking now is a medical, you know? Mm-hmm. Facility. The person in front of me is a doctor. I said, What you going to jail for? He tell me, he write some prescriptions or something, you know? Mm-hmm. And I said, Wait, this look good. Appear like top people in there, you know? Black, Chinese, doctor, <laughs> people who own their own business. When I walk through that thing, you know, dog, you remember it's a medical prison, like jail. First time I look at him, I see a man stand up on his head and he must sing some song. I don't know. This just pure mad people. You're in the wrong place, bro. It's a medical. Mm-hmm. But medical means mad people too. Mm-hmm. Medical isn't only physical, it's mental exactly. also. Mental, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. So me start crying now. Them put me in a cell and I tell the people them say I kill myself. So them send a psychologist to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, this other Sweden in 24 hours. Really. <laughs> so the, 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 the psychologist coming to me now. She said, but she look at my paperwork and say, 
um, you're almost out of here. You know, I must say, no more, I killed myself. She said, all right, we're going to put you in a room, but if you run into the wall, you can bonk off because it's rubber mm-hmm. in case you try to kill yourself. Somebody just tell her, I'm going to want to kill myself again. <laughs> so them leave me at the same cell now then. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a bull venting. Mm-hmm. So me come out now. That's one thing about being a Jamaican that I will never, ever give up Jamaica. Mm-hmm. When you're Jamaican, you go jail, people respect you. No matter how bad a Yankee is, as long as you're Jamaican, you know? Just talk Jamaican and them rate you. Got you. One of them start talking to me about him, my artist and go Jamaica before and we notice this man. He have a bag with egg and ham, a beat up all over. So I said, what that? He said, boy, them there in the prison so long, they must get creative with the food. So, but then I watch them and I watch them and I'm talk and I talk and <coughs> them call me now. They call my name. They never for call my name one time and I'm a run. Mm-hmm. And them say, oh, it's time for you to go. You know, them just kick you out of the jail, you know, when it's time for you to come out, you know. No, I mean, I have no wallet, no nothing. So, mm-hmm. I walk to the corner of the road and they had a strip club. I'm going to my ox, a strip of your car, and she called a camp for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go home. And for about three years, yeah, three years. Around that time, yeah, I'm going to court every month. For so long. Just so them chew it out. No mind matured kind of, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh. So were you able to travel these times or were you grounded all these times here now? Travel. Travel with restrictions. Oh, with restrictions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to tell them, you have to tell them um, where you're going. Mm-hmm. You have to tell them the hotel. You have to give them a number for the hotel. All different kind of things. Were you allowed to leave the country or you could just travel within the U.S.? Well, the judge tell them that they can't stop me from making a living. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, w- I was allowed to leave. Mm-hmm. And at this time here, you were setting up yourself in Belize also. Long time. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't set up myself. Care everything. Why Belize of all places that you could have gone, you've been and all that? Why did you choose Belize? Because Belize always show me love. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go somewhere with some people, you know? I was surrounded by love. You ever been to Belize before? No, you soon come here. I remember I invited you. Mm-hmm. Um, Belize is a, is, is, is very similar to Jamaica. Isn't it? And it's, it's, it's like, you know how Jamaica is where a country, like uh, Jamaica might have Feuds in between them one another, but when it comes to rallying together, mm-hmm. when I first came here, no, I mean it was hard for me to be accepted here by songs. By songs, yeah, they call them feel like me coming for take with them two dollar with them I make, mm-hmm. and it wasn't so, isn't it? Mean? That's how the, the that that clash ended up with dynamic, me being with dynamic here and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I know about that one there. That's the um, thing here, Ring the Alarm. That was the first clash that ever happened in Belize. This was 2016. Right. It's the, 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 that was their first introduction to a clash. Mm-hmm. They never understand what a clash is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because at this time here, it was more juggling and more stage one, these type of stuff there that was coming to Belize. Yeah, they never know Black China as, as a sound to be clashing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They know you as a drug good. Because even talking about that same one there, it was it was a good clash. But you could tell in that class there, you you got emotional down in the end because a lot of stuff was happening in your life at that time there. Yeah, my daughter, I just found it out that she had a, a brain tumor. You know, something funny most of, all that time. Mm-hmm. You know, this year mm-hmm. is when she took out those tumors after all that time. Mm. Yeah, she just took out those tumors out of her head. Mm-hmm. And it was successful, so you know. 
but uh, let me give you an example. You know, and and I don't, people just not using their common sense anymore. Mm-hmm. If dynamic was such a wicked sound, I'm not taking away nothing from 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 Turret. His name is Turret. He's a very good selector. Mm-hmm. But if you, you remember, this is why, remember I told you about Africa, my intention was to kill Africa to get their glory. Mm-hmm. If him saying kill black China, shouldn't he have gotten our glory in Belize? All right, uh, people don't understand this. When you're too quick, people too quick, for demise people and kill us all. Mm-hmm. Him never come back to Belize. You know how much people was in that dance? 80. Mm-hmm. The dance flop. Mm-hmm. You understand? So people don't understand they make it seem like it's a big dance and 2,000 people was there and then killed Black Chen. Yo, I'm going to tell you something. Him, him sees the opportunity and him, take, him, him, him just take advantage of the opportunity. You understand? Are, that's what you're supposed to do as a soul man, as an entertainer, whatever the case is. That's your job at all times. Yes. No. I had a lot of stress going on with me the day. Because mm-hmm. me then, I youth, my care, rent a care for go pick up. Because at that time, I'm not living in Belly City. I'm living in Belmont. Mm-hmm. So I let a youth, my rent a care. And the man crashed the rent a care, tear off the whole side. Mm-hmm. So I have to deal with all of that. I have to deal with a clash. I have to deal with just me being there because Willie never come. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Will he never come or not? Man, but I was just thinking that fuck. This belly, so if the crowd turn out, then people are ah, they might have my back anyway. Mm-hmm. And I never lived in Belly City, so I rented a bus from um out of the eighty people. Let me carry forty. You know? mm-hmm. I'm a buy most of my buy forty whistle. And fuck the same people want to buy the whistle for a chair for dynamic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so the bus go home empty, right? <laughs> I guess they didn't understand the assignment. Yep. Mm-hmm. They, they don't know what clash is, they must have blow whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then now, me see how the dance are going to come and say shit no matter what I play. Mm-hmm. And the crowd where there is mostly sound man who don't like me. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I said, all right, no matter what I'm gonna make win. So I just abandon this dance. I'm cry. So I put on a little crying thing. <laughs> to try to win back some votes. Never work. So I said, all right, I'm not playing a tune for tune. I left the dance. You know, you try Ricky Chupa thing, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to walk out Ricky Chupa and ask him how I'm crying. Yeah. But when you, when, when you take your licking, you just have to take it down. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. I mean, up to this day, I don't think the promoter pay dynamic. Mm-hmm. But a win is a win. No, for sure. Yeah. 100% there. You understand there was even, I want to talk about Belize a bit because you, you've done a lot of great stuff and you're doing a lot of great stuff. I remember one year you were keeping a birthday party with, um, Beanie Man. Yeah. Beanie Man was a Beanie Man was supposed to be on the show, but there was some static you were getting because they didn't want Beanie Man or you to say anything against people, incite any violence or anything. What happened with that? It, I think it was your birthday dancer too. What had happened? Well, you know, there's a um, there's a gay community here, mm-hmm. and them them the Sabinian man don't like gays. Mm-hmm. 
And they also, we don't know where them find tapes that play all different kind of things. Them say, me, you want to kill the Pope. Call me for kill the Pope. Mm-hmm. Not even the president of the United States of America can kill the Pope. That man powerful, you understand? But it, uh, I mean, we just take it with stride because if them never do that, maybe my dance will have flop. Mm-hmm. But the prop, the, the, the publicity we get, them see him. Gay community people came to the party because they more, mm-hmm. yeah, and they had fun. <laughs> you see me? But we just, we just tell them, I, I don't have to play music that incite against any any kind of culture, any kind of people, any kind of you know what I mean? I don't want to play music that incite violence for people to have fun. So I just did a clean event and I told the DJs, look, nobody played nothing. I wanted them to go play Boom Bye Bye and the man get the biggest forward ever, dog. <laughs> And then get the forward from them same people. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just one of those things. But listen how you redeemed yourself in the public. Do you remember when you were driving by a lady that was getting bitten by a dog? And then you had to go back and save the lady from getting mauled by the dog? How you know these things? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. How you, you study? Bobby, me and you are bridges. I know you from 99, but listen, I'm not going to come sit down here and talk to you and not know a couple of things about a couple of things. You understand? All right. May I drive down the road in my community? This lady, she had her little evening jog. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty, pretty girl. She named Debbie. Mm-hmm. I never knew her name at the time. But she used to work at a bank and thing. And... <sighs> Why? It's like some pit bulls was chasing my car. Mm-hmm. Some wild pit bull, two big pit bull, you know. So we we'll drive past and then and then something tell me look in my rear view mirror. And then when I look in the rear view mirror, I saw the girl on the ground and the pit bulls were just ripping her to pieces. Mm. Oh, I reverse back and Open the passenger side door and we try to get her in, like pull her in, but the dogs wouldn't let her go. Hmm. And she was going in and out of consciousness. And every time I would pull her, the dogs would come so I'd let her go back. You understand? Mm-hmm. So what I do, I just put her back out for a little bit. And when I noticed them kind of like easing her, and then I pull her back in quick. Hmm. And there was just blood all over the car. I remember earlier in this conversation, earlier, bro, you were yeah. telling me about the same blood thing where you know you can't handle this, but you see when you had to jump into action, what happened? You see how oh, everything come together. Mm-hmm. When it's to save a life or to see a life, mm-hmm. then blood don't matter. You see me? And I took her to the emergency room. And they took care of her and the TV stations came there and they interviewed her and she said, this guy saved my life. Mm-hmm. No, I actually ended up living in her house. Because I guess she never wanted to live in that area no more. And she had this big, huge house. Mm-hmm. And I ended up living in the house, you know what I mean? For like two years. And we'll, 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 we'll remain friends, you know? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard from her in a while, but I should text her. <laughs> I see how she's doing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because she, she, she never would forget that. At all. At all. That's crazy there. Because I know you always, I'm not sure if you're still doing it, but I know you always used to do um the Bobby Chin Weekend, where you'd have a dance, a stage show, and all type of different stuff going on. How did you even come up with the Bobby Chin Weekend in Belize? Um... We just we also have to try to bring like a, the same kind of dream weekend here mm-hmm. and, and thing. But, you know, I, I, them never used to clash and them never used to, up to this day, mm-hmm. 2022, I've never seen an all-inclusive party in Belize. Okay. Them just want to buy them own liquor. <laughs> them can't get that concept in their head like one money will drink free. 
Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah. It's it's great food here, great people. And actually October is my birthday, you know, me I do my birthday here again in October. Mm-hmm. October fifteenth. And I'm bringing an artist from Trinidad called Young Brother. Young Brother, yeah, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's that, that's my virgin. Soca artist. Yes. Soca artist. I also have motto with some St. Lucia. Mm-hmm. You don't know. My, my don't tell Serrani them and bugle them and all of them for flying early, you know? Mm-hmm. And DeMarco them, but DeMarco was just here the other day, so. Mm-hmm. And them know how my thing go muscle. When I bring an artist from Jamaica, I'm not too in the fun sitting there. I cook can't be fun get them and them too. Mm-hmm. Piece of pear and white rice. I'm not fun sitting. Because you're on the ground with them, so you know how it goes. Yeah. But Serrani, Serrani, and Bugle, and them, madam. I'm back next to that here too, you know. You know? Mm-hmm. This was 2016, I think you brought them over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm telling them never cost 80,000. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, a lot of, I, I do a lot of stuff here in Belize, and most artists come here. They actually go through me to book them, you know? Okay. Uh, one yeah. time, did you have like a booking agency one time? Actually, no, you know. But it's just because people know me, every artist good. Mm-hmm. Then just, you know what I mean? Then just try book to me because I was the one to bring cartel here and then him go to jail. Say that one more time. I was the one who was to bring cartel to Belize but him go to jail so okay so this was this was yeah. right before everything happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Wow that's crazy. I got a couple more here for you here. Um I want to get into some of your clashes here. Yeah. One of the 2015 War in the East with Jugglers. Yeah. How did that come up and how did you rate your performance in that clash there? Um, they approached us. Well, they approached me. Mm-hmm. And, um, the, the money was good. The offer was good. Mm-hmm. But the preparation was harm. Hmm. Um, when you get to be a certain stage in your life, like if if you're doing a certain thing, muscle, mm-hmm. you start to look at why why am I going to turn down a ten thousand dollar date mm-hmm. for pride? I was, I'm, I'm always the one, I was always the one to take a clash regardless of the results. Mm. Whereas dupes them more reserve. Oh, we don't, we don't want to take this or we don't want to take that or we don't want to take this. But I just do it because guess what? Mm. At the end of the day, when you build your name as Stone of our Black Chinese, nobody will ever say you're dead mm-hmm. to the world. So I'm not going to turn down 10 tons in dollar because I pride and anything. You are the honest to God truth? 100%. For that dance, Black China, Willie was busy on the road. Mm-hmm. And I was busy on the road too. So we never really prepare. I met Willie in Germany Two hours before the clash. Wow. So me and Willie sitting there, me, Willie, special key, English fire in the room, I was sitting there and we said, all right, we're going to play this, we're going to play this, we're going to play this. So we'll plan out the first round. We'll plan out the second round. Then them call us and say, yo, you have to go to the venue now. Mm-hmm. You know which two rounds we win? The first and the second. I will learn from that. It just goes to show your muscle that anything you do in life is preparation. 100%. And if you, uh, in my head now, me, I think the jugglers is a smaller zone for we. Mm-hmm. So there's no way if we win the first two rounds, 
there's no way them can catch you up back. Mm-hmm. But mental mistakes was made. Like, if you go in a clash, <laughs> and the people them were, were, were like on your sound, not willing or not, I don't know if you describe this. Mm-hmm. They, they never feel like we should have been there then. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Then how am I supposed to win? Mm-hmm. You understand? It's, you mean it's long after the jugglers clash, things start revealed to me. Mm-hmm. Where when I said, Bobby, you know, we never feel like we should have taken that clash. That's why we never really help you. So we should have help you. Mm-hmm. You understand? It's the same thing with Dynamic Clash. Willie wasn't there. You never noticed that? Man, it was somebody else who was playing the song that night. Yeah, someone else who had never played Black China yet. From Rhythm Style? No, not Rhythm, Rhythm, Rhythm Force. Rhythm Force. Yeah, yep. yeah that's a Willie Virgin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, but let's but but take it as a stride. And, 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 and um, a lot of things went wrong. Mm-hmm. There was a part in the dance where juggler said me mash up them laptop. Yes, this is when you went to go pick up the laptop. Right, but I never pick it up for mash it up. Mm-hmm. Them laptop never mash up, them just use that card against me. Mm-hmm. You understand? And everybody on that stage know mm-hmm. that them laptop never mash up. I said, you couldn't play again. But the crowd, thinking I did something cheap, you understand? Mm-hmm. So them just, them just, you know, yeah, it would, clashes are funny thing, you know. Of course, clashes are funny thing, dog. Like, remember now, it's not like me in a Germany. Mm-hmm. It's not like me have the earthquake crowd behind me and the guns and the ammunition mm-hmm. for bad up anybody. You understand? So we just, as I say, a win is a win, but. Sometimes I better you lose for gain. Hmm. I'ma tell every little sound this. Because if you look at jugglers' achievement today as compared to Black Cheney, did did the win gain them anything? But we're talking about two different arenas here. You know what I mean? Even though you guys stepped into the arena, their their mindset was never like what you guys were going for in the first place. And I mean, they want to play dub, scream, and go about their business. Probably producing also. They produce good songs. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, where the mistake I think jugglers made mm-hmm. is them get a momentum from that, but they took on Tony Mataran. Mm-hmm. And they went to Jamaica that same fucking dream weekend mm-hmm. and Matara and demolished them. Like literally demolished them. Mm-hmm. I don't think they are big of a sound as they used to be. Am I right? Momentum is a hell of a thing. You understand? And a lot of people don't realize what happens with your sound happens with the people in your sound once momentum is going or momentum stops that is true mm-hmm. that is true yeah it's just like art i don't hear nobody ever mention that dynamic loss to in the boom clash to a chinese girl mm-hmm. japanese girl notorious yeah, the Notorious killed Dynamic two times in a one competition. You remember that? I did not remember that one, you know. But mm-hmm. if that was Black China, you wouldn't forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? So people, lost, lost, I don't know. You have to be fair. All right, and kill a Black China, but a China girl kill him back. Mm-hmm. It's part of, part of the business, you know what I mean? Part of the business, yeah. yeah. And, and um, like, I had fun times. I had fun times with jugglers, though. 
<laughs> other than clashing, just touring Europe for them. I, I don't I don't think we'll ever see times like that anymore. Jugglers, boy. Yeah. Hey, put clash aside. <laughs> them can juggle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jugglers. Yeah. But I know this was a little bit earlier in you guys' career. The clash that you guys actually won. This one was called Knockout Clash. This was versus Innocent, your old song Poison Dirt, and Juicy Mental. You remember that clash, yeah? Yeah, Black Cat too, but Black Cat never mm-hmm. Yeah, we won that trophy too. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's what I'm saying mostly. How come people don't acknowledge us for the stuff that would do good, but the bad stuff they want to, oh, Black China lost this or Black China loses. Boss, you, you've been around long enough to know that bad news travels 10 times further than any good news would ever get to travel. You understand? Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But, but it, you know, it take, a, it, it take a little good news to make you feel good about yourself sometimes. Not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. as, long, as long as you know the truth, you'll be all right. You can't keep going to the doctor here so you have gonorrhea. Mm-hmm. You know, you want one time you're going to listen, no, you don't have gonorrhea. You only have herpes or something. You need some kind of good news or for uplift your spirit sometime, you know? Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Yeah. Talking about doctor. Because when I met you, yeah, you were bigger, you had hair and everything. But yeah, we we were younger. This is like 24 years later. When did you, and you brought it up earlier, when did you actually find out that you have diabetes? I was actually on tour with Dupes in Switzerland. Hmm. Well, it was in the 2000s and I was peeing a lot, peeing a lot, peeing a lot. I remember I was on a tour bus with Dupes and I didn't want to pee bad, but there was no bathroom close. Hmm. And Dupes hold up hold up my jacket in front of me for peeing our cup and I spray up the whole jacket. Mm-hmm. And I remember coming back home to Miami and I want to pee. Mm-hmm. And then I get up in the night and I kept getting up to pee, to pee. And I look at the toilet and I see ants all over it. Mm-hmm. So I went to the doctor and that's when they told me that I have diabetes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it, it gradually progressed from type 2 to type 1 where I take insulin. Mm-hmm. And look, see? Wow. I have this sense on my arm mm-hmm. um, oh. that I, I, I can, um, when I watch it, I'm sure I just scan it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it tell me. Right, I tell me, so the battery dead right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So this is something that I guess you, you live with all the time. You have to watch where you're eating, watch where you're drinking and all this stuff here. Yeah? Yeah, that's why nobody can answer me. Boom, boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what does it have to do with diabetes, bro? You can't eat boom, boom, without diabetes. <laughs> Your lecturer said, put on it too sweet. I was waiting on you, Bobby. I was, <laughs> wait- I was waiting on you, boss. I, was there. I got a couple more here. I know you guys were even down at Dream, Dream Weekend the other day, 2022 here. How was that? Man, you love talk about dance, a man slap me in the head, you man. Listen, I'm talking, there's a lot, there's a couple more stuff I'm going to cover and you're going to understand why we got to where yeah. we got. Yeah, I was in Dream Weekend after so many years. I went back mm-hmm. this year and the, the love for people showing me was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I, the next thing I want to tell you about is, you know, my eyes bad, right? Mm-hmm. This is your retina. Um, my retina. This is what communicates to your brain. Yeah. To tell you that this is this color. And your retina is actually what makes you see. Mm-hmm. My retinas are like these. Mm. They're detached. Both eyes. Yeah. So everything to me is blurry. Mm. And um, I did this eye. It looked pretty, not true. <laughs> what do you do to it? I can't see out of it. Mm. This eye is the worst one. And I did, I did a cataract surgery mm-hmm. and they went behind my eye to laser, to laser the blood vessels in between and the fluid mm-hmm. and try to bring it back. But it, it was destroyed for too many years. Mm-hmm. So the, the only possibility for me to really, I still waiting for my eyesight to come back. But it looks like I will need a retina transplant. Okay. Both eyes, but they don't have that technology yet. 
It's not around. I th- I don't. They did it once in Korea. A, a mm-hmm. YouTube it. One person did it, and they can see. Mm-hmm. But it's actually putting in a, a fake eye in your eye. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we just live with that right now. And a lot of people don't understand. Like most of us walk through a dance right now. Mm-hmm. I can't see the laptop for playing music. Mm-hmm. But it's getting from the door of the dance mm-hmm. to the... Because clubs are dark. Yeah. And my eyes are dark. So I have to walk with a flashlight and, you know, people don't understand, like, they think I'm dying or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Like when I was in Dream Weekend, I had a crew that actually just helped me when I come off of the stage to the car and, you know, but they don't understand. It's my eyesight. Them just things say, oh, Bobby Chin old. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. But it's not that. I have a problem with my eyes. Mm-hmm. And it is caused from diabetes. That's part of, that's part of the issue there also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm grateful because I went to the doctor the other day and everything mm-hmm. is in perfect. My heart, my kidneys, it's just my eyes mm-hmm. and the whole Viagra situation. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, if there's one thing, Bobby's going to keep it real, probably even too real sometimes, you understand? Not, so, to, go how- off track, not to go off track, but you know, the other day I took a Viagra muscle. Uh, everything gets stiff except that. <laughs> my hand, them, my ears, man. I say, wait, what is this? What kind of full body Viagra is this? I mean, at that, at that bunker you was against me now, muscle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, me go up on the stage now and say, yo, me a old man, me you are the Viagra king. <laughs> yo, muscle, bunker come in and say, Mm-hmm. Bobby Chin, nobody in a dream weekend one with your cocky can't stand up. You see the chair when I sit down and find him, I could have melted tonight, my melt. The man said, as a matter of fact, if your cocky can't stand up, that means you are heat, pum pum. I'm going to say to the man, no. Most of them say to the man, no, no, no. No eating, man, you see the chop. Chopstick. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. But that, that you the bad still. Right? Yeah. Because even a 2022 black shiny, what does a 2022 black shiny look like? Because you guys went through it. You guys seen some high highs. You guys been through all type of stuff. What's left for like a black shiny? Now, where's the next evolution of black shiny going right now in like a 2022? Well, my goal, and mm-hmm. um, I will talk about this daily, um, Brandon, my goal is, is to form a new team. Mm-hmm. And more only hope I live for see it. Mm-hmm. For say a younger, aspiring type of, you know, energetic black Chinese. Because, you know, for years, me and Dubs who hire this one or hire that one, but... You know how hard it is to find a wall chicken. Mm-hmm. You know how hard it is to find a Chinese Jamaican MC. Mm-hmm. So we have to make adjustments. We have, we have we do have to make an adjustment. Whereas we hire people not based off of them color or whatever. It just have to be some bad selector mm-hmm. that can carry. The legacy that me and Dupes and Willie and Walchi and Brandon, everybody created. Mm-hmm. You understand? Um, I tell everybody this, you know, Muscle. When you look at a song like Black Chinese, when you look at Jugglers, or you look at a Renaissance, or King Turbo, you're looking at brands like Nike mm-hmm. and Adidas. So all you have to do is put out a new shoes for that brand to accelerate again. Mm-hmm. But if you don't put out the new shoes, you're going to end up, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
I'm pretty sure all of us as sound men go through the same thing. Uh, Stone love go through them ups and downs now because it's hard for find people to replace a Billy Slaughter. Mm. You know? There's nobody that will ever replace Rory. I mean, Stone Love have some bad selectors still. Mm -hmm. But them don't reach a level of them under yet. Isn't it? That's a level of influence that's few and far in between. You understand? As a selector to reach that Rory level, that influential where you influence a whole generation of selectors, that's far and few in between. Yo, mate, well, watch Chin the other day. Chin from World Clash. Mm -hmm. And the man said something which is so true. Mm -hmm. The man said, Black China get a bus like the big bus, not the little bus, you know. You understand? <laughs> the man said, everywhere we go, because people would love to deny that in a muscle. People who never like Black China from day one would love to say, we never get a bus. How are you going to say that? That's impossible to even think because you got to remember, if you guys really got your break in 2000, 2001, and we're here in 2022, this is 21 years, 21 to 22 years after the fact of you guys putting out these CDs that were so crazy. And if you look online right now, today, when we're done this conversation, go online and look, people today are still asking for new black Chinese mixtapes. When is this sound coming back? Where is this sound? Black Chinese to this day. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I get that every day. And I think it's a, I think it's a thing of me, Willie, Dopes, and Walshin maybe too. Everybody would just need to come together and do it one more time for the people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's like it wouldn't hurt for yeah. us to do 60 minutes of satisfaction to our old fans and to the new. Mm. It, it uh, If you notice, Willie, really I do some crazy things right now. You listen, of course. Willie. Yeah. So just, just don't, 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 you might be surprised. Yeah. Crazy right there. The only input what I want is from dopes. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Talking about dopes, 2022, what's your relationship like with dopes right now? I don't really talk to him as much as I should have, but you know, it was like a family, same way, like a brother. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I can pick up my phone anytime I'm calling. As you know, I was going through the problems with this eye, mm -hmm. and him called me, you know? Me and Dup's relationship is, is, my closer now mm -hmm. to Willie, but, Willie do have the history on me and himself. Got you. I hear yeah. you. I understand 100% what you mean. Yeah. And I would never, ever, ever, but rather die muscle more than say anything bad about any one of my black China men, mad. I rate that so much. You have no clue. You understand? Mm -hmm. Guys, but pick up my phone right now while she not answer me. In my heart, I get vexed. Mm -hmm. But but no one will call me back. You know them way there? Mm -hmm. And him, 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 him always call me back. Yo, you must you be surprised how close all the ways, you know? Yeah. But I move to Belize and I see them every day. Mm -hmm. But if I do go to Miami, like I was in Miami last week and I said, Dupes, I'm there and I said, Bobby, come and link up and go eat. And me and Dupes mother is like this. Proper. Isn't it? Me and Willie mother is like this. Mm -hmm. All of my meal goes to Willie house. Hmm. That's how we live. You understand? Mm -hmm. While she's still link could we? Good. If you notice, I can show you a picture with me, while she, Willie, at my father's funeral. Hmm. While she just take it out in time for come to my father's funeral. You understand? My mother, my mother is like a mother to all of them mm -hmm. before she passed. There's not one time Willie Jean ever got Jamaica. Not one time. And I look for my mother and drop her money gear. Mm. 
Uh, I'm big on that muscle. I'm big on the word loyalty. Willie's a loyal youth. Oh, no, 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 Willie, no. Mm. A great youth. Yeah. Willie never used to cost bad word and them things like that. You see me? He just loves your music. Music is really life. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Bobby, amazing, crazy journey. This is the last one before we go. Yeah. You've had this amazing career from, okay, let's, we're going to talk about the Black Shiny from call it 2000 yeah. till right now, 2022, all right? When would you say has been the highest point in your career? And when has been the lowest point in your career thus far? I would say the highest point is, the highest point in my career is, is just going to Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm visiting a place called Sandai mm -hmm. where they had a um, tsunami. Okay. Yeah. And just to see how the people reacted to us was, um, it's, um, it's many, it's more high points than low, you know, mm -hmm. you know, cause you know, when you have this amount of high points, you look at the low as minimal. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So. I think the highest point is in my career. The highest point is meeting William Dupes. Mm. Oh, well, she. Because when you meet that core of people that make, made you make a living, Black China wasn't barbecuing alone. Mm -hmm. We all help each other to strive. You know, look at Walsh at Major Laser. It's because Black Chinese. And that, that is the highest point ever in my life, other than my kids, is, mm -hmm. is dopes really Walsh. The lowest point in my life in terms of Black Chinese era, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a... Uh, The lowest point in my life in the Black Cherry era is all of the friends that I've lost mm -hmm. during that period of time. Most of you wouldn't believe. I wonder sometimes and I pray to God, I wonder why me still alive mm -hmm. and so much people dead around me are most of just in the past. Two years, so many people have died, dog. Like my mother, hmm. all of my high school friends, them on my know up on my street. So much people died. If it's not COVID, it's from natural, natural um things. You understand? Mm -hmm. Um, that, that I look at that as a low point. And. Musically, the lowest point in my life, musically, I have to think about it because there's been many. I'd say the lowest point in my life, musically, mm -hmm. um, is when I had to um, leave Florida. Because mm -hmm. I get blamed for it all the time. That I left the song to die. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we can't leave something for die, we can't dead. It's like the other man them should have just carry it, you see me? And yeah, and I said that at the lowest point in my life. Mm -hmm. Musically. But I don't really have no low point musically. Mm -hmm. Other than the the few that crash them with the where, where, where yeah. What them said we shouldn't take. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I've never lost a clash in Miami. My Miami is your place. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you guys clashed super sound out there one time too. One on one. Yeah. Or was it DJ Kareem? No, it was super sound. Mm -hmm. Super Twitch. It wasn't super sound at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next high point is the clash in Bahamas. You heard about that one? 
Which one is out there? Jamaica versus Bahamas. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This was you guys. I forgot the name of the Bahamas song that you guys were clashing. Um, were you guys? Yeah. The end of butcher, like you know, yes. you know, the people start booing before we even play one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will still end up fighting it and fighting it and fighting it and win, hmm. you know, with the little Jamaicans that was there. Mm-hmm. Crazy, Bobby. This conversation has been nothing short of amazing. You know what I mean? Especially to see it through your eyes, the way how you felt, where you've yeah. been through things, you've seen what you've done. Bobby, I'm so happy that today I got to sit down with you and actually give you your flowers. You understand? And say, Bobby, are you not in a bus? Yeah. This is what you guys did, and we appreciate it from seeing it the way we seen it. Because when I met you, you were poisoner. There was black Chinese was in my mind. It wasn't even a thought no, by the true. next year. I look around. These guys are the hottest thing on planet earth boss. Yeah, it was good to be. <laughs> it's good to, to know that people really appreciate us. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, coming from, a, uh, coming from nothing, mm-hmm. you know, dupes know where me and him come from. You see me? Yeah. I really know to, and, and to see how we're living now is, is just amazing. Crazy. Just amazing. Now, you know, I remember, remember like, we have a track for Rihanna new album will come out. Okay. Dubs have a track for it. Um, Willie are doing own little things right now to it. Like, everybody just, everybody's just doing what they need to do to survive. Mm-hmm. But if one of us fall, the next one is there to pick up the other one. Mm-hmm. Dope's tell me this years ago, you know, muscle. He said, Bobby, I might not reach out to you all the time, but I'll never see you suffer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Dope's will never make me suffer because I have too much secret for him. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I I knew when this conversation was getting serious. I know there's gonna be some point where Bobby's Bobby. gonna listen to me. I know Bobby Boss. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they wanna they wanna check you out, they wanna book the song, they wanna link you on social media or anything, leave some contact information before I let you go right here. All right. Um I'm on Instagram, Bobby Chin80. My Facebook is Bobby Chin. Um I have TikTok and empty there, but I don't know how to do the dance. I'm not going to TikTok for no video and empty there. I mean, I'm too old for them to the muscle. Never. Um, if you want to contact me, my number is 240-422-0188. I still have a DC number. Hmm. That is loyalty. <laughs> to the bone. And my belly's number, you have to put the plus sign, 501-623-7110. Um, just reach out to me, let me know because um, I have something special for you, to, you know, muscle. Mm-hmm. I have something for you, special, special, special. You're not gonna believe that when we we'll, we'll come off the ear, I'll show you. All right, yeah, when we'll come off of the, the ear, I'll show you because to all true, loyal black China fans, I think they deserve it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I have it, trust me, I have it. All right. I'm glad to hear that. Bobby, amazing conversation, boss. You know what I mean? I remember, conversation. Check out my birthday bash in Belize if you have time to come. It's October 15th. Muscle will be there in the VIP doing his second interview. Um, you and young brother and them man there. Yeah. Is it right? is yeah, but yeah, muscle, you know something? Mm-hmm. All you have one life to live and more you enjoy your life to the fullest. Because my mother used to tell me this before she died. She said, the day, the day you're born, God know the day you're going to die. Hmm. So tomorrow, I promise to none of you. You see me? I'm going to say, you see, all I'm going to select a friend and I get old and old and old. I'm going to wish all them the best of health and prosperity. Tony Mara, does it he, Pink Panther. Every single one of them. You know, I come from out of era, which will never be replaced. 
Hmm. You see me? You got the one in the Canyon zone, the King Turbo scene. All of them. You know, man. Big up every single zone. Except for um, Dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen. You know, Dynamic's good people. That's my people. So we're good to go. You know what I mean? Good man. Turrets. You never know him named Turrets. No, so okay. so I guess I guess you're better friends than I am. Yes, mm-hmm. it's all good. Let me give you an outro and get you out here because this conversation, boss, one for the Jungle. books. You understand? Do that. Yeah, my respect. All right. See? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. Wow. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichunt.com.